Is that what Departments and committees. Parker? Are you happy? Is that? Yeah. Yep. Recreation department. Yep. Um, well, we're on the fields. Um, games are playing. Um, there's about 35 to 40 kids with Cal Rift, and that's not going to be they just use the fields. I schedule the fields and practice times games. Um, and we've got about 12, 13 girls playing softball, and about 20 kids playing t ball. So we have a lot of summer weather and we're not going to any rain out, so we can keep playing. Um, tennis nets are up. Um, I might have to replace a couple of the posts, a couple of the ratchets that you lower and raise the nets with. I jerry rigged it last year and it's, it's stripped and I don't think I can fix it. If you just buy the ratchet and reattach it, the, the, the handle, that's about 160 bucks. You buy the whole post, it's about 250, which comes with everything. <laughs> so I think that's probably the way to go. But um, I got it temporarily working. But I, but but I, I think, think it'll last like, the season. Well, the problem is it it's locked in now. But if you need to lower or raise it, it's the real. It's going to be a real aggravation to do it. So <clears throat> the winch is a buck sixty, and the and the whole the whole thing is. About, Two fifty, yeah. So per post. Mm -hmm. That's per post. For the set. So okay. you buy two posts. But you've got two it comes with a the real cranks, yeah. right? Yeah. And Are you, both cranks yeah. bad? No. Just one. But I anticipate the other ones going. It's like uh, light bulbs when they go or smoke detector batteries <laughs> tend to one goes, the other one goes not too, too long after it. Those posts set into a sleeve? They set into a sleeve, yep. Yeah. We got any money in the budget for that? Yes, yeah. Because sure. uh, things like this happen, too. Yeah. And you just have to, you, know, you can't anticipate everything, but um, whether it be bases or posts, they all, they all wear <coughs> eventually, and um, they have to be replaced occasionally. But the tennis, tennis court itself is in pretty good shape. You know, there's one small crack that I'll, I mean, that I'll have to keep an eye on, but uh, at this point, it's nothing to worry about. But, uh, that's, you know, I'm always surprised by the amount of use so that they get. You know, summer comes yeah, in. Yeah, it gets a lot in the summertime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, high school uh, basketball Wednesday nights, that just ended this week. Uh, adult basketball is going to continue for a while. The numbers are pretty good, and pickleball will continue for a while. Those numbers are pretty good. Uh, unified basketball ended about a week and a half ago. Um, that was every other Friday all winter long, and, and that just ended. So, um, but what happens is the weather gets warmer, people stop coming for indoor activities. You know, your hardcore basketball players will hang on, but you know, most people, when it gets like this, they want to be outside at seven o'clock at night. They don't want to be in the sweaty gym. And the fields are in pretty good shape, um, beating up really well. I'll have to mow for the first time tomorrow, probably. <clears throat> um, but they're in pretty good shape. And it seems to be more fine. <clears throat> in spite of the weather. Yeah, yeah. Questions or comments <clears throat> for the rec director? You got a game? Uh, <coughs> pickle water. Yeah. Richard. Good. Um, things come together pretty good. All the roads were open except um, the Mead Road. I still got that closed down. That's still pretty wet. I'm trying to keep people off it because they get on that, they're going to do more damage to it than anything you know, right now. But that should be opened up, I would say, next week. I'm sorry, which road did you say? Mead? Mead Road. Okay. Mead Road. Right. Yeah. And there's no houses on it. You know, I'm thinking you can go both houses on the end. Um, we've been going around, the grading of the roads have come along pretty good. The judge started up around Grade Hill and those places today because they're drying out a little bit. They're still wet, but you know, we'll finish going around there. And we've got about three quarters of the roads then, I'd say. We've been over them once, so I feel pretty happy that way. Um, the uh, Hemingway Road, that's open. It's open there. We put a little gravel on it, but it's still pretty wet. We've got five, six trees on it at first for the week. Let it dry out the next three days. It came down during the winter. Um, the Cracks Healing Company is going to hopefully come on Tuesday and get started. 
I'd like him to get started. I told him to wait. We have probably one more day of sweeping, and then the sweeping will be all done. Maybe a little bit Tuesday morning that we've got left to do the town wide sweeping. Um, Your roads in particular that you're going to crack seal? Quite a few of them. Yeah, just, yeah. It, I don't, my own personal feeling is I don't think I'm going to do the sand sand anymore. I was pretty disappointed when we did it last time. <coughs> I'm going to do the crack ceiling, and I think we're better off to put them into an inch shim mm -hmm. with the pavement. We get, we get more bang for the buckets. Yep. No way is where it used to be. You know, it used to be, you know, 30, 40 years ago, you could lay the sand up and mix it with tar, and it's better than any asphalt you'll get. You know, now, I just, I think we're better off doing the crack ceiling. And I found yep, another no. company in Vermont that is about $600 a day cheaper than the company we were using. So, and they do a good job, and they'll, they'll, they'll cover a lot of ground. You know, I'm hoping to get them for three or four days. We get him here and let him do that. As far as that. Late next week? Uh, well, he's a, maybe Tuesday. Oh. I'm going to call him tomorrow and let him know. You know he's going to shut, which will be good. We'll be, you know, I think it'll be dried up pretty well, too, <coughs> as far as that. Anything you know, else seems to be doing pretty good. We've been <coughs> trying to keep that a jug with the grater and clean any of the ditches out and stuff with the <coughs> blowers to, so we don't mix it in. But And hauling some gravel also. And, we get another couple of weeks here, then we'll have the regular mates to go around cleaning all the culverts and all the turnouts and all that before we get any big spring rains. The roads, I think they're in pretty good shape. Is okay. something wrong with Old Mill Road? It's just shut down. I just put the ribbon across to keep people off it. Oh, is it better? Yeah, well, there, there was a pretty good wash up the middle. Yeah, just other than that, it's all set. Yeah. Because I saw the ribbon across the road. Yeah, people have been pretty good. It's clothes, I mean, you couldn't have got through until today anyway, because there's still a big pile of snow on the other end, <laughs> where we plow at the end of the year. Just right there. And I think that's something next fall that we should think about is, <clears throat> I'd like to think about maybe some of the roads have a public hearing and put Jerry's and Barry's up for the winter, the roads we don't do. I think it's going to cause a lot, of, <clears throat> a lot of headaches for me, for Chief Calkin and Dana, I really, in the long run. You know, we ran into that, we had the meter road, it was all closed down, there's actually branch, somebody pulled it up and drove down through, and I walked through today, it's okay, but if it hadn't dried up because of the wrong rain, it would have really sucked for the town because it would have been all washed up. There's no reason for it. There's no, no reason for anybody to be on that. That's my opinion. I just hope that I have the board's approval in the fall, I'll bring it up as far as doing that for those three or four loads. Yeah, that safety issue. Yeah, and we run into that behind Squirrel, like we all know that, and some of those other roads. It's one of those things we have to have to get across where you just lift them up and move them, as far as that. And I could work with you know, Chief Calkin in the spring if he wanted me to remove them. You know, once we get into the fire danger, we could do that. But people have been pretty good all on the meter road I did. We just put some road clothes signs and some <coughs> delineators for now. You know, most people are pretty respectful. They are. Yeah, all it takes is one note, really. Yeah, we'll we all things know that. And, yeah. You know, you wash out a road, what's going to yeah. cost you to fix it? A lot. We all know that. But. Or somebody gets barrels stuck up in there, what's their cost is to go dig them out? Other well, than that, everything's going pretty good. Um, the, the Rochester, Lewis tree from Rochester, New York, That's they're cutting forever source, correct? Yes. And then Fairpoint's doing, or whoever a phone company is, they're doing some lemon. And is, is, uh, and are they stringing wire also? I haven't paid attention. Well, I think they're pretty much done with that. I thought Fairpoint was on Cleveland Hill. I thought they were all done with that. Uh, I, I just saw them down on Woody, Woody Road, I think. Oh, I it's, think that's something to do with the bridge. I think they're moving stuff around. That's my feeling. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's something to do with the bridge. They're moving some stuff around. And the state, uh, do you know when they're going to start to grind up and go? Cause um, they, I haven't heard so, anything. A month ago, they were all set to go. They were going to yeah. hurry up and start working, and I haven't heard anything from anybody. But and and they won't they won't use <coughs> they won't use uh, Eversource's tree, uh, tree. No, no, they'll do it themselves. They'll, they'll, they'll do it themselves. Yeah. I assume. And I they'll thought that was going to start April twenty seventh, and people can plan it out. No, I haven't, I haven't heard anything soon. As far as that, an interesting uh, <coughs> conversation with a business owner in town today who said. Wait a minute. If if the Butler's Bridge is done in July, uh, that's going to work a substantial uh, hardship on businesses, especially on this side of Butler's Bridge, who are going to, because I'm assuming the state is still going to post the um, 
detour as 25, 16, 113, because they, even if we tell them it's okay to post it on Depot Road, they're not going to do, they, they won't do that, correct? No, because I think they have to post it for the heavy trucks. Yeah. So, yeah. You're not, you don't want those on Depot Road. We don't want them on Depot Road. Yeah, that's true, too. <laughs> we don't. Although, no. although it better be posted because that. Well, it is. No, yeah. it is. For six times? Yeah. I would not be surprised if the Chamber of Commerce, the local Chamber of Commerce or something says, hey, wait a minute, isn't there any other time we can do this? And if the schedule isn't as hot as the past. I, I, I think they picked the best time to do it because this one schools out. Sure. There's not going to be any good time. <coughs> yeah, right. I think that they're, they're trying to work with everybody. And I, my own feeling is it's the best time to do it because they're not dealing with the school buses. Right. And at one point, I thought it was going to be June, but in fact, it's July. They start, their start date is July. They're, they're going to start before July 4th, was what I heard, doing some stuff, but the main is after July 4th, so when they're really going to yeah. get going. Yep. They're going to work long days, I believe. I yeah, so. they're going to have limited time to get that done. There's going to be a lot yeah. of noise right off the quick. There. Yeah. Yep. There is. Questions or comments for the road agent? Thank you. Thank you. Chief uh, Coker. Got nothing new since last meeting. Just business as usual. The only other thing, May 9th at 10 o'clock here, myself, Darling, and Richard are meeting with Homeland Security and FEMA for the October 30th storm. There's one of you want to show up, or two of you, whatever. We'll probably go out and look at some of the stuff that got repaired. Everything else is going good. Is that, does June show up for that too? No. June? No, she has nothing to do with it. We should get that hazmat plan <coughs> right off any day, I expect it. And then we'll be done with her until we do the LEOC in... <coughs> I can't remember if she said 19 or 20. I bet it's 2020 because of the way the grants are going. And that's uh, emergency management? <coughs> local emergency operations plan. Well, yeah, every five years. Seems like we just did it. But. <coughs> Questions or comments for Chief Coker? Rich, did you get a chance to do any of the list for the townhouse? I apologize. Yes, I did. But I just gave it to Darlene. Oh, I, only, okay. I only made two copies because it may be beneficial. Um, there's some things that have been accepted in the past, and they've been that way where we're putting money into it and doing it. I think it's a good time to look at those. So I included seven previous inspections so you can see what's been going on with good. that. Good, great. Um, and I just gave that to her. Okay, great. Thank um, you. And it, I apologize. I was doing it in between. So when I started it, you can tell that I didn't physically go. I didn't know where Gus was at. Yeah. Then I went and looked, and it answered some of my questions or points I brought up. Sir, as long as we know what we need to do, that's the, the big thing. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Other questions? So, thanks, Chief. Thank you. Chief Littlefield. Good evening. Uh, uh, much business as usual. Um, I think I gave you stats in your packets. Um, so the month started off pretty busy for us in April, and then it sort of tapered down. We'll have probably a little lull here, and then the summer season will start to kick in for us. So, um, Other than that, we had a drug take back uh, on Saturday, and we had about 20 people come in, I believe, just a, just a head count. Uh, about 20 people coming in, drop off. I think it was roughly about 10 pounds of medication. So it was actually pretty good. So. We'll continue to, you know, have that every year. They do the same date, you know, time of year and everything, so and we'll advertise and stuff. So I think we'll probably grow from there, but it's a good start. So. If somebody missed that, what, what's your recommendation for? I know they can go to Conway PD. Yeah, that's like the closest incineration site. Um, there's another, there's a few, I think Mulboro has a, a secure 24-7 site. Um, Conway has one. I wouldn't doubt if Wolfboro had one. I don't, I don't know all the locations, but there are some that have a year-round secure box. And Conway, Conway's information is on our homepage on the website. Yeah. So I did speak about yeah. a couple months yeah. ago. And that's 
you know, totally anonymous. You walk in, put the yeah. stuff in this plastic. Yeah. There's a, like Conway, I know, is like right in that lobby. You go in and yeah. just ditch it in there and run away. Um, May 16th at 6.30 at the Congregational Church. They, you, they got you in. That, yeah, so it <laughs> seems like there's many hands doing similar things, and I was kind of by back way had heard about this May 16th event, I think, at the church over here. Um, public safety awareness, I'm not really sure who's, I mean, I know who's heading it up. I, I don't know what the backing of it is. I don't really know much about it. Um, kind of was brought in at the last minute, and so, I mean, we'll be there, you know. I, I just didn't know if this was uh, not, that's the not, event that you no, and Chief Coke were. No, I, I'm not really sure what the basis of this one is. Good. but. Um, Priscilla Remick posted it on the Tamworth Exchange. Yeah. And she said it was going to be you, Dougie Wyman, and Chief Coker. Yeah, and I heard about it from Doug before I even got asked. So they were already asked before we were asked. So it's, I don't know. I'm not really sure. I don't know if it's something that the congregation there asked about and wanted to do something. Whatever. Um, I had explained to her that, you know, we were looking to do the similar thing and they're still going to go ahead with what they have. So. Questions or comments, Chief? Thanks, Chief. And just on that Butler's Bridge that is set to go, we're shutting it down in July, and it was the, the, they determined to just shut it down? Yeah. Well, you know, for years it was going to be... Well, there was different options, I know, in right. the meeting and stuff. I just, like, the final determination was to... I haven't gotten the state saying not formally. No. It's gonna happen. Not the last meeting the that last we meeting, were with yes. the state, they said they were gonna close it down right after school is over and they were gonna guarantee it be open before school opens. <coughs> so that was their window. But they were gonna completely shut it down. Because that was get a some sort of firm something from the state because right. you know, that affects our emergency services yeah. and stuff. So the, um, there was a meeting up here of the engineering side and the tech guys to pre predominantly start scheduling, and that was run by Jim Bowles, who's I'll if, reach if, out not, to him. if not the engineer, he's, if not the lead engineer. Yeah, Jim might know. Yeah, I'll, re I'll so, reach out to him again. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think it's, you know, they're still working on the schedule, but it's not as good as we thought it was going to be with half a bridge at a time. Yeah, I mean, so we have solid information. We'll put up some on ours. Facebook as well, but I'm sure people don't want to know. I mean, yeah, sure. It's kind of a big deal. And, and you're going to see a ton of traffic on Whittier Road because mm -hmm. GPS is going to take people, regardless of those orange signs, they're still going to follow that GPS, come on Whittier Road, realize they can't get across the bridge, and then wander down Whittier Road until they pop back out. Yeah. Um. I, we got a bunch of requests that have been floating around for a year, more, two, uh, for Bill Lambert and the, the folks that came up here to, to look at Tamworth Road, and we talked about no passing lane and some signage, and then folks at Chicago, we just learned that they the blinking lights coming down there <clears throat> on the on the uh, east side of the bridge, that, you know, the one that's leaning on the tree limbs, uh, the wires and stuff, they say, well, you know, those things are passing, so they're going to take it out of there. So I think what we're going to do is ask Darlene to send a list of what we'd like um, or what we're hoping to get some, I don't know, you know, uh, we're not going to get thickly settled signs, but some other stuff and a couple of ideas about Page Hill at 113, you know, where folks come through here figuring. Yeah, well, I just had a resident ask me who lives right on Tamworth Road what the status of the blind painting was. Yeah. And, and, and they had state, some, so. so so what we're going to do is it, well, once we all come up with it, with what the public asked for or, or what you know what we all put in the list we'll get it to you and you feel free to cross it off because it's a stupid idea or whatever but if there's stuff that you want done too that we should request from the state we well, would love to get that information An extra speed limit sign wouldn't hurt <laughs> what an extra speed limit sign 
or strictly enforced. Well, one of the things that, that somebody mentioned was <laughs> speed limits strictly enforced on on Tamworth Road anyway, you know, before the, the down by uh, Evans is down by the uh, the field, yeah. you know, yeah. by by depot, yeah. and then twelve more times gone. <laughs> we set. What's that? Um, yeah, right. Transfer station and your and your company. So thank you for your patience. Mr. Clark. Yes. Okay. Mr. Clark has made a request about bringing stuff in from venue. I gave you this. Uh, I'm not certain sure. what is it you are trying to really do. Well, basically, what it is is I have a business where I pick up recycling um, from homeowners or businesses, restaurants. Um, and I'm basically a middleman of taking stuff from those locations to the transfer station. Uh, so I've been doing it up in Conway and Bartlett. Uh, and I've had uh, someone who does weddings down in Juan Lancet, which is part of Tamworth, right? Okay. Um, uh, about being able to do recycling at, at her weddings. Uh, so she contacted me so that I could come down, you know, I would set up barrels and everything else, sort everything, and then take it to the transfer station, make sure everything is put in the proper places, and then go from there. So I would not be bringing any recyclables or anything from outside of town. It would only be from within the town, which is what I do up in Bartlett and Jackson. I have to figure out which side of the road I'm on sometimes and take it to those places. But uh, So basically, I, I have a service to make it easy for people to recycle. Now, you also said that you've been approached by some homeowners or something when I talked to you about... I've had a few people who, yeah, who've asked me about that, and uh, at the time I said that I wasn't doing anything down in Tamworth. I mean, if, you know, if I had enough people who wanted the service, that it would justify me being able to travel down here and uh, spend half a day or whatever um, picking up and then taking it to the transfer station. Well, about 25 years ago, when Little Pond Disposal was in certain business, we had a separation route set up by them. That did not work out very well. I mean, there was more stuff came in that went in the trash than it should have been, man. I don't know if I want to get back into doing something like that. And uh, we are a source separation here. Everything is separated before it comes in, supposedly. Yeah. And I'm kind of wondering, you get wedding venues or parties, unless you're going to have a crew of people there, to sort it all, or well, before you bring it in, you're going to empty every bag and barrel you have to go through it. I'm kind of worried about it may be a little more in there than just recyclables. Right, and, and, that, and I we totally don't like pulling that out of the out of the glass, the plastic, the aluminum cans, and all the paper, the cardboard, yeah. all of that. No, and I don't like doing that either. But that is part of so, the service that I have. Is that is that I would sort it? Yeah. No, I totally understand. And that, you yeah. wouldn't have so you only had the one person like for the weddings. Yeah, and like and I said, that might be the only one you have all summer. Right. You know, I mean, I don't know, and I, I'm going to leave the decision to me, let the board go through it, they can discuss it, and see what they think, and then they can let us know, or let me know, and I sure. can contact you and let you know, um, depending on what they did, I brought in a couple of pieces here for you, you know, it's our, uh, Yeah, I looked at that on your web. Excuse me. Well, uh, you didn't recycling. get this on the web. Oh, not on that. Okay. This is the one for the recycling. Okay. So like you're going to do like the <coughs> weddings and stuff. And then yeah. This is if you, they decide that you wish to do something else, this is what it will be. But okay. like I say, about 25 years ago, it did not work out yeah. well. And I'm not sure the way the market's out today, but. Play the things out whether I want to jump back into something like that and end up in the same position I was back then. No, absolutely. 25 years ago, I was a lot younger. <laughs> I was able to do a little more. No, and that, and like I said, that's you know part of my business model is that um, I'm trying to make it because unfortunately homeowners and you know they might be throwing it in with the trash. I right. at least know that it's not going to be mixed in with the trash and. Right. So, like I say, but if you're going to be there for the whole venue and we'll make sure it's all recycled, you're going to end up sorting everything out. Oh, I know, yeah. Morning, because it's all separated and. Yeah. I don't want you to bring it in and say, no, you can't bring it in at all. Yeah. 
Let me let take it back to the wedding. Give it to the bride and groom. The they bride the bride. There. Uh, I don't bet they wouldn't like it. <laughs> let me give you that. Oh, okay. You have that. Oh. Anybody? I, I'm sorry. I'm not, yeah, I, I got a question. So you're at a at a venue, whether it be a wedding or whatever, and you told them that you're going to do the sorting and recycling form. What do you do with the other trash? Um, they would be taking care of their own trash situation. I don't do anything with trash. So uh, when I spoke with the person briefly, um, you know, they would be collecting their trash, and then I would just be collecting the recyclables. <clears throat> so what it would be then is they would have to have two people dispose of those trash. Right. You would do the recycling and someone else to, to do the trash. I mean, I don't know what they're doing now with the trash. I would imagine, I hate to say that probably some of it is being mingled in, or they then have to sort it themselves and take care of it. So. I've only had one from the Long Lansing area, but I've had several from the Chicago area. And those people were in the northern Chicago area. We had a conversation with you. They always bring it in on their own. Done. So, I do know the one from the Long Lansing area. I had a little tussle with the person of bringing it in, but you saw my point of view. <laughs> we have a number of venues in this town. It's a uh, attractive place to get married. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And uh, we got a, a well-established tent uh, company and and a, another tent company, which is just over the border, but yes. uh, uh, including some folks for, with roots here. Uh, so if other folks find out what you're doing, uh, I'm assuming that you would pick up other... Absolutely, if it, was, you know, if it, if it is a good model and I can make enough money and everything else, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I you know, just briefly, I started the business because I felt that we need to do more about recycling. And so whatever I could do to make it more convenient for people to recycle, because unfortunately, it's too easy for people to just kind of throw it in their trash or hide it or, you know, they go to the dump and then they're there with their one bag and their, their bottle and their can their bottle and their piece of paper. Um, so if I can make it more streamlined, both for them and for the transfer station, I don't want to boast, but I think the transfer stations like me because they know that when I dump bottles in, it's just bottles. When I dump cardboard in, it's just cardboard. So they're saving the time of not having any problems. Questions or comments, Mr. Clark? Does he have any ideas of what to do with the mixed paper? I mean, I know that you just take it to the transfer station, but do you do any kind of analysis? Um, I don't do any of that. You know, I, I want to try to get into more of that. Um, my lofty goal is to really try to get and you know, solve some of our recycling problems in the world. Uh, but right now, it's more, you know, a service to be able to uh, help people recycle properly. Questions or comments, Mr. Clark? I, I think we're probably going to have to. Uh, we're going to have to write up something. Um, in case somebody wants to go on a competition with you, and I understand it's it's stuff that's used here, right? So, uh, and the transfer station crew has worked hard, and our, the lady that does uh, coordinates our hazardous waste has worked hard to get folks to increase the um, recycling pot for concern for the environment, predominantly because. And it's, that's an expensive thing that we, we're looking at being more expensive. Than, so the more recycling we, 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 we can do, the better off we are. Yeah. And <clears throat> this is not the best. Um, it's not the best place in the state um, to get low prices for pulls. You know, yeah. it's, it's pretty expensive and it's of concern to us. So we'll probably write up something that um, stipulates it's solely. <clears throat> used here. And, uh, at, exactly, yeah, yeah. which I totally agree with. Yeah. Do you have an active contract now with Conway and Bartlett and Jackson? Um, yeah, but it's not a contract, but basically an agreement that, that I will go there. You know, I met with them ahead of time and made sure that, that they understood what I was doing. Um, and I see those, you know, see the crew there um, daily, basically. And uh, I think it's worked out, honestly, I think it's worked out well for, for them also. Uh, like I said, so they know the cardboard is cardboard, the paper is paper, et cetera. 
When would you be looking to start? Do you know when your first lead you pick up? Um, I don't. I you know I had been in touch with the, with the, the person, and then uh, then I sent the email to you guys. So it's we haven't set up anything yet. Um, I you know she may decide that she doesn't want to do it, and may be too expensive for her, and she's going to haul in the back of a pickup truck. I don't know, but so there's nothing set yet. I have you know I wasn't going to sign any thing before I knew what you guys wanted to do. Just ask if it, are you the sole person going through all this recycling, or do you have employees? Or um, I'd love to say I have a lot of employees, but no, it's me. <laughs> I am a corporation, but still, I'm still just me. One man operation. So, so uh, do, still, do people still get married in June? Or? <laughs> I am a justice of the peace too, so I could marry him too. Okay. <laughs> Catching this with both ends, sir. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it would, I guess, pr be pretty good if, if at the next meeting we, must we do it here tonight to, uh, to have something that you know we could sit and, and talk about. In the group sure, today. absolutely. And if you want me to come down any other time, I can definitely chat with you guys. Good, good. Or maybe Darlene could send something. Yeah. Then, you know, if you, there was a problem with any of that. So. Great. I mean, I, one of my concerns is, is uh, as we all know, our recycling uh, is not going in the best direction because there aren't any markets for our stuff. Exactly. So my question is, I know all of a sudden, how much more do we have to try and get rid of, like in paper and cardboard? You know, are we going to have bales of it sitting around, or not bales because we don't bale it, but we're going to have a bunch of it sitting around we can't sell and go anywhere. Right. So it's just going to increase it. I mean, that's that's a. Well, I would hope it would increase it because it, it, it's what should be going there anyway. Right. So, like I said, if it's a wedding yeah. venue, I don't know what they're doing with it presently. Right. Are they hauling it out of town? Are they using a different shipper who hauls out right. of town? I mean, that's just hiring somebody, you know, dumpster X. Right, that takes it up yeah. north. Yeah. But that doesn't happen. Well, yeah, up north is the platform. The right. right, they still take everything. Yeah, but there's some, they, they got a problem. So yeah, too. exactly. Um, uh, the worst, the worst case scenario from us, for us, is to have somebody at a venue fill up, you know, not sort it out and dump it in the most expensive uh, t uh, tonnage price that we're paying. You know, with, no, exactly. Uh, was compacted, and he would have a bad time with that. And so. You know, no, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. All right. Further questions? Okay, thanks. We'll try and get some. Absolutely. Thank you for. I'll just leave these just a uh, the little cards there just to let you know what I'm all about. But thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. So, thank you. All right. Thank you. Good talking to you. Will, you. will you help us with, uh, you know, some concerns? And would you also, would you, if these folks <laughs> decide to, you know, it's a good idea, would you be okay with having them do this, whatever's coming up as on a trial basis and see how it works out? Good. <laughs> so if, if the end result here is sure, you know, wanted to do the one answer thing and see how, see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. One other thing that I had is I been getting a lot more information in the past two weeks. I think we'd be better off instead of changing to mandatory recycling or pay it just well, letting it ride the way it is until we find out what the markets are going to do. I mean, we don't want to get pulling out tons more, and then we can't get rid of it. <coughs> Excuse me. The district rep has already told me that uh, if the market continues to go down, we'll be ending up paying to get rid of some of that stuff. Take the paper of the gathering. It'll be paid for our time. I can't believe it's not a market for everybody in the whole world. Is <coughs> The Merv plants are what are ruining that. The what? The Merv plants, single street. When it comes out the end of these conveyors, it still has trash and stuff in it. They, the borrow companies want to pay for them, but they don't want the trash. <laughs> we do clean cardboard, and these yeah. others don't do clean cardboard, so they say right. they don't want it. You know, when you take all your plastic, your tin cans, your glass, paper, cardboards, and all that, mix them all together in a container, a compactor, dump it on the tipping floor, 
pick it up with a bucket loader, dump it into a machine, the machine separates it. It's not coming out clean on the other end. It's separated, yes, to a certain extent. And that's what a lot of the burn plants are. And they're selling a lot, bundling a lot, bailing a lot. Well, <laughs> selling you, it overseas. You and, you and you, you, whoever, uh, both guys that you right. had are pretty good about telling us no, yes, yep. no, yes. That's right. Uh, we put out a decent product up there, but we're just a small little pebble. We're the pee under the Sleeping Beauty's mattress. <laughs> We don't wake her up, though. Is this a Woody Allen movie or is this one? Of <laughs> what, what is this? <laughs> Questions or comments for Glenn? Glenn, I know I asked you before, but what, what are we selling cardboard for? Only $25 a ton. Okay. It's going down. It's still <coughs> You had a bail. I was going to say, I kind of went off and talked to one of my suppliers and two weeks ago I got a price on it failed on a 30,000 on a 30,000 pound bot uh, basis the market price that he would have paid us would have been $110 a ton for cardboard failed cardboard, bail, bail yep. cardboard. <laughs> but um, then is that stored. But the way the market's going right now? I, like I said, that was two weeks ago. Yeah. I haven't. Well, I came in two weeks ago and made these statements that I made, and then following Monday I started receiving information. That, oh, yeah, stupid, shut up. <laughs> you need a pole bond to run You need something to house the baler and put the black cardboard in to keep it semi dry. Yeah, it all goes on moisture content. So, yeah, it's a little bit more labor intensive. So, anyway, that is all. Oh, no, and uh, I'll get Mike in hopefully within the next couple of weeks to check out the trash compact. Uh, the ram plunger needs to be reconditioned again. We did it about eight or nine years ago. And I gotta check the floor, it's getting some wear in the floor of the compactor. We may end up needing to repair that too. I've already planned that into the budget and hopefully we can do it if we need it. I do know the RAM needs to be neutered. For other questions or comments, sir. Glenn, thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thanks. Economic development. Yes, I have a couple of things here. Um, and to remind you, on June 25th at the Chase House in, um, Mer in Meredith will be the annual meeting for the Lakes Region Planning Com Commission. And I do know that the Planning Board has nominated two entities from Tamworth to receive awards that day. I, I won't know until next week, nothing I'll tell you, but uh, <laughs> uh, I won't know until next week whether they were uh, going to be awarded or not. But I'm encouraging you all to think about maybe attending. Um, also, on May 21st, there's going to be um, a Route 16 um, safety of Route 16, and that's going to be at the library at Oss in Ossipi, and I'm hoping that we are well represented. What time? Uh, 6 o'clock. That's the other thing. There's an Electric and Planning Commission meeting, and the title is um, Route 16 Safety. So I know that I'm hoping the planning board will be there, and I'm hoping you guys would represent yourselves. Um, now, I come to tell what you asked me. Uh, wet paint has been, we've been busy all week. That starts on Monday. And um, there are 29 artists that are going to be part of that. And we have receptions around town, and in Shakurawa, and in South Tamworth, and in Tamworth, and in all over. So, uh, we're hoping that many of you will attend the receptions each evening that go from 5 to 7. And I have actually asked if um, on Friday there's going to be a forum uh, that Economic Development is sponsoring called Tricks of the Trade, which I'm, I'm planning to have in this room. And then in the 5 to 7 reception part, there's going to be uh, the Lyceum, the distillery, the other store, and also here, uh, the, in the hall would be refreshments and art for the public to see. 
So I'm grateful that we can use this building, so that's great. Um, let's see what else. Um, also, Aaron wasn't able to be at the planning meeting. No. It was last week. <clears throat> so I'm going to tell him what you need. What okay, you sorry. Need. I got in late from Florida. No, 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 you were out of town, so no, I no, no problem with that. Um, eloquently, Susan Tysers, who's back here, about a month ago, or two months ago perhaps, uh, made a presentation to the planning board on behalf of economic development about the master plan. And I just want to share with you a little bit of how that's evolved and how you're going to be involved, okay? And that is that we feel that the master plan was about 10 years ago, and the planning board feels that we're going to ask for a meeting that happens in about the fall, maybe October, or whatever. But in the interim, that the various departments please review what the master plan says about your department. What were the expectations? What were what have you done? Are there things you still need to do? Are are things that don't are relevant anymore? And so that we can kind of come together and rather than rewrite the whole master plan as a whole book, uh, one can say, okay here is what it is now, and here is what we've done, and oh, we haven't looked at that yet, we should take care of that. <coughs> kind of review where you are. <clears throat> and that's the sort of thing that in the, the meeting in the fall would, would allow the planning board to know, and maybe even have a new presentation <clears throat> for the town meeting in a year, to say, here are some changes that we're updating the master plan. But it's the responsibility of the departments just like, not just ignore what the master plan was, but to see what was asked of you, and then to go forward. That's kind of it. The most common use in this town of the 2008 master plan was digital copies. The more, you know, there's only like four, I think, copies of in print, which was wicked good about the the pictures, the photos in there, but the. The li both libraries had CDs, and there were people in town who requested CDs, and that committee, that was Tom Peters' committee, I think, just had them. You know, they, they burned them for the folks and handed them. There were people who were interested. So, if you could... In one of the drawers there, which I don't know which one, um, but we can provide, there is a whole bunch of um, a concentration of the topics that people can much more easily, I don't have it with me, but much more easily look at to see the oh, summons. Oh, thank you, Aaron. I, I didn't mean, I meant to bring one. I thought, I, I think I got one. Don't hold me yeah. to it. But it's a small little thing that's in one of the drawers that we'll make sure you all have um, that in fact gives a synopsis of here's what economic development is supposed to do, here's what selectmen are say, saying that they're responsible for doing, here's what the planning board's supposed to do. But we all need to like, look to see, are we? Did we do them? Is it irrelevant now? What can we do to make it? Yeah, that's yeah. what it is, yeah. And that's kind of a synopsis of the master plan. And we're going to make sure that all of the departments hear what I'm telling you. Okay. But, you know, that all of them know this. They, they left some of them. But anyway, that's, <coughs> that's maybe an efficient way of updating the master plan without updating the master plan as it what the cost that it would be to start over. So that's... And the master plan is on the town website if anybody wants yep. to read it. Yeah. So it's... Yeah. Yeah. But as a start, though, people could read this, and, and we'll have to get it out for them. Yep. And if we have to make more copies, we will. But it's most important, the f when the wet paints next week. May 21st is the road thing. June 25th is the annual meeting for Lexington like, so planning. Could, could, could you see to it that Albany selectmen were invited to the May 21st thing? Because they, they're they pretty knowledgeable about what, what was supposed to have been done, and, and uh, even though they're not uh, LRPC. They're not LRPC. No. So that, that's right. Okay, let me check with the executive director of LRPC to ask the protocol of saying, okay, Albany come to invite them. And, and and that, I'm not going to personally invite them. But you know what? You're selectmen. You can invite them. Well, I, I hesitate to invite somebody. To somebody else. It's like to, a party. To somebody else's party. It's like a party. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let me tell. I'll do that if you all go. 
have to post that in case one They're also very You're not meeting up with each other. I, you're just, I agree with right. that. Unless you're there to discuss and make decisions, you can go to other things. Yes. Well, Albany's very good at inviting us. They hold one meeting a year, which is coming up in September in Wild Lancet. That their select board meets there because some, you know, and they're very good with inviting us to let the legislators, the, the senator, they, they get us up there to talk about stuff that is important to them and a lot of what's important Steve, to us. Steve, um, as I said, I'll make a call tomorrow morning to the executive yeah, we'll director of LRPC if I get an assurance that you all are going to be there too. Well, can I tell you? I, uh, uh, you, you can have that, but uh, I wouldn't hesitate to lie to you about that. I'm very much interested in this. I don't know. I'll make the call anyway. Thank you. You're welcome. That's That's all. Questions for the ED? For Pat, Pat and, I just have a question because I noticed today that, again, the Tamworth Visitors Association updated on the exchange that they've now added a quick draw to the farmer's market with children. Well, this, here's the thing. Are we? My question is, it's on that corner, and yeah. I know parking's been taken care of and stuff. But will you add a group of children do quick drawing and stuff of the farmers market area? Yeah. Are we going to need? The, here's I'll, I'll help you here. Uh, in that we did make a request of Brett School, if it, and also of Ken, of, of whoever, and nobody's got, no children have wanted to, because. Between school all week and whatever, there, there was not a lot of interest in that. Okay. But, but I hear what you're saying. In which case, we would have said Dana. Okay, that's all my question was because it came out today and that was added, and I went, yeah. oh. But we, we, we did try. Okay. Yeah. Dana can quit draw. That's right. Like a little thing. <laughs> <fan. laughs> can Before we go any further with the debate, can, can I make a suggestion that we change the agenda a little bit and sure. take Norm. Norm looks like he's in terrible pain. <laughs> Thank you. Can we, can we get him so he can go home? And sure. Get some rest. Sure. I, 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 pr I appreciate your, your concern. Thank you. I, I am in a fair amount of pain. But, um, I had been wanting to address the selectmen on the Tamworth Village septic system for a while. As you know, two years ago this spring, the system failed, and uh, we now have it repaired, and we've got plenty of good things that I can talk about there. But what I most wanted to be able to discuss tonight was what I would refer to as lessons learned. Why did the system fail, and what do we need to do to prevent it from happening again? And so that's the, that's the crux of, of this evening. Um, so, as I said, good news is the system has been repaired, and... Uh, we have right now a very robust septic system. It's a small municipal system that handles everything in the village. We're actually, now that we have our meters in place and we're monitoring it, we're running at approximately 20% of capacity. So the good news there is that significant development could take place within the village of Tamworth, and we would be able to accommodate it. So that would mean not only could we handle restaurants, if someone wanted to open a restaurant in the village, um, but any of the um, properties in the village that are not connected, if they needed to connect, we have the capacity for that. So like, off the top of my head, the two most notable, for example, would probably be the Remick properties, because they're all within the collection system, the UFIS Church. Um, certainly anything off of Greg's Way, if additional development were to go in there, or if any of the other existing buildings in the village were to be expanded, the capacity is there. So that's absolutely, I think, good news. I was at uh, Candidates Night a couple months ago, I recall, when the topic came up of infrastructure, and you'd think we were talking about apple pie and motherhood because everybody was nodding and yeah, we really, we're all for supporting the bridges and the, and the roadways, and uh, it's good to hear that, but the, the septic systems, the water supply, the utilities, they're not as visible, but they're every bit as important to maintain the economic vitality of, of the community. So having a healthy septic system is, is crucial. 
Um, so let me talk a little bit about first why it failed and before coming back to what we need to do so it doesn't happen again. Um, I've probably spent in the last two years about a thousand hours on this project working with a number of engineers, lawyers, lots of folks over at the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. They were very helpful. Consultants, government officials, and a lot of time from the folks who were involved early on on the development and the original creation of the Village Association and the septic system here. I wasn't part of that. That was back in 99 and 2000. Uh, but those, most of those folks are still around and they were very generous with their time. And I think uh, we owe them a huge debt for the amount of time and energy they put in to get this system put in. They did a, a great job. Um, unfortunately, the post-mortem on the system doesn't reflect nearly as well on the engineers and the contractors who put the system in. I mean, basically what we have, first of all, I have to say, the original system was clearly built to a budget. I don't know exactly how the budget was set for that project. I don't th even think that's so much an important point. But the important takeaway is that the system that was put in place was an absolute bare bones system. It was little more than what I would refer to as a large residential system. It lacked any and all features necessary to long term serve the needs of the village community. Um, it consisted of four disposal beds that were supposed to be having the flow evenly distributed to them. There were no flow equalizers ever installed on that and within six years of the system's installation the first bed failed on that. Um, they referred to that as bed number three. We believe bed number three was probably getting 75 or 80 percent of the flow to the system as opposed to 25. Bed number one we believe never received a drop. When we took the bed up at the end of the system it was still bone dry and smelled like PVC. Um, the system never had um, ventilation provided for it. The bacteria who digest all the waste are, are aerobic bacteria. There was no ventilation provided for them. The system that was chosen, a design that was known as an Elgin system, the, I hate to bore you with too many details, but the Elgin system was a very compact system. Excellent solution if you have a very small location and you need to shoehorn something in. That's its benefit. By also being so compact, you're disturbing less of a footprint. Less of a footprint generally translates to less expensive. The downside of the Elgin system is that it is not a forgiving system. It requires everything to be nearly in perfect condition, and what you're distributing to it better be what it can handle. Just the opposite of what we had going on ours. Uh, as I said, the, the systems didn't have flow equalizers, we didn't have inspection holes, there was no way anyone could ever be checking on these to see if we were getting an equal flow. None of those features were provided in the original system. Um, when the old system was removed, we took the time to survey the elevations. We found that the beds, which were supposed to be at specific elevations, again, to ensure equal flow to them, some of them were off between 6 and 12 inches. We could explain 1 to 2 inches due to settling, not 6 to 12 inches. Um, we found in the records at New Hampshire DES only one record of an inspection ever being done by the uh, engineering firm before the system was, was covered and put into, put into service. Um, we uncovered dozens of sheet pan sized pieces of, of asphalt that were used to backfill the septic system over the, over the pipes, not where the beds were, but over the pipes. So what came up in the road when they were putting down the, um, the collection system wasn't taken off site, it was used at the disposal beds. Clearly not best management practices and clearly not something that uh, was well supervised. So there's an awful lot of additional um, 
failures of the original design and of what I can only call shoddy workmanship on there. Um, but the town and the village association were not well served by their engineers or their contractor. Uh, when the first system failed, um, the village association board at that time attempted to get the system fixed, but the, no surprise here, the engineers pointed fingers at the contractors, the contractors pointed fingers at the engineers because there was zero documentation of the install, no narrative, no photographs. Basically, the um, board at that time didn't have any leverage and settled for a payment from the two, the two firms for a fraction of the cost of what it would have taken to replace it. And that bed remained out of service until the balance of the system failed two years ago. Um, as I said, uh, two years ago we noticed that there was raw sewage percolating up from the surface of the disposal beds, um, pooling and then flowing down into, I believe it's Bryant Brook, the nearest brook over there. Uh, New Hampshire DES immediately was notified. They told us that we were in violation, um, that we had two choices, either fix it immediately or shut it down and allow no further discharge into the, into the beds. Uh, at, at that point, that would have necessitated either pumping the main collection tank on a weekly basis or putting porta potties in front of the 27 buildings that are connected to it here, here in town. Uh, the, fortunately, yeah, it would have been good Fourth of July parade. Yes. And could, we, could, we could put bunting on them. <laughs> uh, but the folks at New Hampshire DES were extremely understanding, very cooperative, understood that we were between a rock and a hard place. And when we uh, engaged the um, engineering firm of Woodard and Curran to come and <coughs> identify the problem and propose a solution for us, they accepted that as, as a good faith effort and allowed us to continue discharging into the system with hay bales, lime on the surface to contain the spill until we could get the new one in place. Um, so make a long story short, the new system, again, has all of the features that the original one was lacking. I will repeat that the original system really was little more than a large residential system and didn't have the features necessary to, han to handle it. It was similar to what you might expect to find in a small condominium association where you've got 20, 30 units of one, two, three bedroom homes, everything is residential, and it's all going into that, into that system, and it's well controlled on one site. That's not what we have here. We have in this, on this little municipal system here in the village, we have residential, owner-occupied. We have apartment buildings that are, that are rent rentals. We have commercial. We have industrial. We have municipal on this. The system is not all on private property. It runs under state roads. It runs under town roads. It is very little about it. Looks like a small residential system or, or a condo association. So enough of the minutia on, on technical, technical requirements of the system. Um, I think as much as we underestimated what our needs were going to be long term to operate a system for this municipal village. As much as I think we underestimated that, we missed by an even larger margin when we identified how we were going to organize it. We basically spent a half million dollars to build this system and then we turned it over immediately to a startup volunteer untrained, unpaid organization to own it, to operate it, to manage it, to set policy, and to govern it. And within seven or eight years, 
the association went dormant, particularly after the failed attempts to recoup money from the um, engineers and the and and the um, and the contractor. Um, it's a very unusual and unique arrangement. When we were seeking funding to repair the system, I had to go to Concord and appear before the New Hampshire Community Development Finance Authority. They have a five-member commission, five-commissioner board that approves or, or, or rejects the applications. The only grant that we identified that might satisfy our needs was an emergency grant that was intended to compensate communities for acts of God. So if a hurricane comes through and wipes out your, your septic processing system, those monies would normally cover it. If a tornado came and ripped something down, acts of God, it would cover it. This was the only thing we could find that we thought we might qualify for. The five commissioners unanimously said we do not believe that the Tamworth Village Association should be eligible for these funds. We think the town should be, eligible, should be the ones responsible for this. We explained to them who was on the system. There are more town buildings connected to this system than anyone else. We have a couple units that are owned by the same owners. Everyone else is just one, one unit, one owner. The town has three facilities attached attached to this, connected to the system. Um, two of the commissioners said under no condition would they support our request for the grants uh, based upon that, the fact that they did not believe that this was a use of the taxpayer's money. The other three asked, what happens if we turn you down? I said, if we're turned down for this, we have no other recourse. The Tamworth Village Association will declare bankruptcy. The New Hampshire DES has already told us if we don't replace it, we can't continue pumping to it. And so we'll put up our, each owner will have to go get their own port john and we'll have 28 port johns in, in the village. That's the most likely thing. The other option would be for the TVA to sue the town for not stepping in and, and, and addressing a um, health and safety. And I said, there's no way we're going to do that. Who knows how long that could take anyway. So I said, the likely situation is you either approve this grant so that we can get it fixed because there's no one person that we can say is responsible. We're going to say it is an act of God. Um, or we don't have a solution. Um, speaking with the folks at New Hampshire DES and, and expanding that others over the last year, we can find no other situation where a municipal septic system that serves a municipality, a small municipality like this, is not <coughs> operated by, directly by either the municipality directly through a precinct that was formed to operate it, or in some rare cases, um, outsourced to a third party for-profit organization, similar to water here in the village is supplied by Lakes Region Water. They're a third party, but they are not a untrained, unpaid, volunteer organization entrusted to it. Um, there may be some somewhere else in the United States that has it. We can't find it. We've tried. We believe that this is the only one that exists where municipality put in a septic system, spent a million dollars, and turned it over to unpaid, untrained volunteers to own it, operate it, manage it, and govern it. Um, when I think about what could go wrong again in the future, <coughs> ultimately I think it's going to come back to that same situation. We are not wise to be entrusting our system to unpaid, untrained volunteers. The Tamworth Village Association for the 16 years it operated the system never had ordinances in place to oversee what could be discharged and how. When the 
Tamworth Distillery opened, no one understood the nature of industrial effluent and just how much more concentrated it is as residential. There was no one who could catch it, and that certainly was another straw that won on the camel's back. It wasn't in and of itself the reason the system failed, but it was one more. Never had system net, the village association never had bylaws. Trying to get qualified people to serve on it, to have to be the ones to have their phones ring when the alarm <coughs> goes off to come take care of it. It's um, it is just a poor arrangement. And I think the reason that Tamworth is the only community that has it set up this way isn't that we're progressive, isn't that we're ahead of everyone on the curve. It was an expedient and convenient arrangement at the beginning, but we grossly overestimated what was necessary to own, operate, and govern this system. I think one thing that the folks who organized this in the very beginning did that was wise is when the town granted a license to the Tamworth Village Association to own and operate the system, it included with that an option for the town to purchase the system for one dollar at any point in the future. Um, I believe strongly that that is the course that should be followed. At our last annual Tamworth Village Association meeting, uh, we discussed this same situation with the, with the um, user members who are in attendance, and there was a unanimous um, vote taken to place a warrant article on next year's um, town meeting to propose that the town purchase the system for one dollar and the town take it over. The, um, as an aside to that, the Village Association, now that things have been put back on its feet, 100% of the operating expenses of the Village Association are borne by the users on the system here in the Village. There is no funds that come from anywhere else. The Village Association, now that things are fixed, generates a surplus of $10,000 a year in free cash flow. Uh, so there's about $50,000 in cash sitting in the account right now, and that increases by $10,000 every year. So unlike many departments that are constantly looking for additional funds, the septic system in the village actually generates a surplus. So it's not a situation that the town would be taking on a, another, another burden that taxpayers would ultimately be responsible for. Um, I would be more than happy over the coming weeks or months to spend whatever time is necessary with the selectmen to help you understand more of this in greater detail and to understand why the TVA believes that it has outlived its usefulness in terms of owning and operating the septic system, in terms of being an advocate for improving the, um, the interest of the community and the town as a whole, the Village Association may still have a strong, a, a strong rationale. But in terms of expecting volunteers who are untrained and unpaid to oversee a half million dollar septic system, that the rest of the town is dependent upon doesn't make sense. It's outlived its time. As I said, we don't look to our police department to be unpaid, untrained volunteers, or our highway department, or our fire department, or a library, or any other departments. But this is what we've done with our septic system. We're in good shape right now, but where it can fail again is the TVA, as it went dormant in the past, is very likely to go dormant again in the future. So, hopefully uh, in time I can continue giving you information and if and when that warrant article is, is put on uh, up to the, uh, to the voters, uh, I would hope that we would have the unanimous support of the selectmen as well once you understand the need and the wisdom of this. But, uh, I thank you for your time.
it's very, it was very important to me that I got a chance to do this once the full expanded select board had been seated and uh, made sure that everyone was aware of what's under the ground and is out of sight and otherwise out of, out of mind. If you have any other questions now, I'd be happy to. Otherwise, I'm... Otherwise, you're out of here. I'm, 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 heading to, I'm going prone. You said 20%. So it's operating at 20%? Of capacity. Of capacity. So there's 80% remaining. remaining. The system was designed for just over 20,000 gallons per day. At one point back in the 2007, 2008 is probably when it was at its peak. At that time, the Tamworth Inn was still operating and was more vibrant. There was more going on there. I understand a few other of the buildings here were, that are not used as residences or inns any longer were more active then. The biggest difference is that the Tamworth Distillery, who took over the Tamworth Inn, is not dis and was the largest user of the system. <coughs> is no longer discharging into the system. Anything? They have their bathrooms hooked up. Okay. But the 4,000, 5,000 gallons a day that they were putting in of industrial effluent, right. the choices there were either for them to pre-treat it, which would have been extremely expensive, or to take everything away off-site. And that's, that's what they've chosen to do. Becky? At a further date, not tonight, but could you bring in how you calculate your rates? Our rates are, I can tell you that right now. Okay. The rates originally were set by the board based upon the New Hampshire DES septic system guidelines, where basically a um, one-bedroom home was expected to produce X yeah. gallons per day, two bedrooms, <coughs> Y gallons per day. Right. And from that, a simple algorithm was created to figure out if we need to generate, let's say, $10,000 a year in annual revenue, we can back into it on a per gallon per day and set rates for everyone that way. That was in place in the beginning. It was modified twice in the first five years when it was determined that the rates were too low um, to cover the expense. And then when the grant from community development block grant was was awarded. Mm -hmm. One of the conditions to that grant was that the cost of septic connection had to be no less than a certain percent of community average household income. Okay. Something right, like that. Right, Don't right. quote me on that. I remember that from there. So okay. you're using that way of So what they said is a condition as a condition to that grant we had to raise the rates to a point that met the minimum threshold of, of, their, of their requirement. And so that's where they are now. We were approximately, I believe it was 27% below that threshold. So every user was, in, was assessed an increase of that 27% in perpetuity in order to satisfy the grant requirement. That's also one of the reasons why we're generating more cash than we really need for, for reserves. Uh, between the expense of public water here in, in the village and the septic, it's a pretty steep burden. The septic system is still reasonable, because again, we're at that minimum level, but the uh, water use is fairly high, and since neither of those utilities, septic nor water, have meters, there is no incentive for anyone to be conserving, and so the rates tend to be higher as a result. And it doesn't make sense for meters to be installed only on the septic side. It's almost universal septic that water. what comes in is what you're billed same gallon per day for your septic. That's pretty typical. No, actually, it's, it's not. It's what comes in is usually, they believe it or not, a lot of states now are doubling what goes out. What you use Double. internally, they double that amount for your septic. 
So if you lose create a, water? if you, you create water, if you use a hundred <laughs> gallons of water, most town okay. town big cities bill out two hundred gallons of septic because it costs more to pro to treat septic than it does oh, okay. to produce water. Okay. Okay. If the town took that over, then who runs it? The the village association has subcontracted all of the maintenance and oversight of the system. So whereas in the, in the past, the phone would ring when something broke down and we'd call the repair service, lamp receptacle, mm -hmm. or someone like that, what we've done since that time is to set up agreements with the septic company to be doing the annual repair as well as what we're trying to do right now is to install, how would I describe this? It's similar to a cell phone, so right now when the alarms go off, we have uh, both an audio and a visual, I think there's a flashing light that goes on. What we're looking to put in there would basically be, that would still be there, but a cell phone would basically automatically call the repair service to come in and do it and cut out the, the, the middleman. But all of those expenses are done by third party. The, um, the, ex the, ex the expense is covered by the users, but the work itself is not done by the volunteers, other than the time Carl Bayer or myself were climbing down into the, um, the holes to unplug things. Your billing and everything is outsourced yeah. as well? Yes. That was one of the reasons why the association fell into such a dormant state is that the volunteers were not able to keep up with everything. So since that time, all of the accounting has been, that's been well over a year now, that all of the accounting has been um, outsourced <coughs> as well. There is one other issue that uh, I didn't bring up um, that further, I think, illustrates how unwieldy the current governance program is. We have, and I'm certainly not going to name names, we have users who are in gross arrears for their, for their user fees. And everyone else on the system is basically carrying them. If the town has a situation where a property owner doesn't pay the taxes, the town has systems in place to address that. The TVA's re recourse is to bring suit against that, that individual property owner. Um, I, for one, am not willing to have neighbors suing neighbors. Uh, my term is up after, after this year. Perhaps if someone else wants to take that on, they, they can. But it is, I believe, wholly inappropriate for, volu again, this volunteer, unpaid, untrained board to be bringing suit against their neighbors to collect the monies that are, that are due. So it's just another one of these unintended consequences of setting it up the way we did. You can't think of every possible situation that's going to come up. But these things come up and we say, gee, we didn't think about that. How are we going to deal with it? So that's yet, yet another reason why um, the current arrangement doesn't work, and certainly as other, other users were to be in the same situation, it would only exacerbate the situation. I just wondered when the new system was completed. The last summer. Last summer, thank you. A couple of months, three months? Last, last summer, it, was, it, it came online. The project wasn't completed until late fall when uh, the flow meters were installed so that we could monitor exactly what the rates were. Up until that point, all we had were uh, hour meters on the pumps, and we would extrapolate a gallon per minute and round up and hope that hope that, that number was close. So you also said you there one of the other options was, like Lakes Region Water does with our village water, would be to, I don't know if it's a sale or whatever, to a private company that does... I wouldn't view that, I, I wouldn't classify that as an option. I simply said that the only situations where the municipalities did not own and operate their own systems, either municipal-wide or through a precinct arrangement, 
were those communities who had outsourced it. Outsourced, that's what I don't believe. So I don't believe that's a viable option here. There's, cer there's certainly not, not uh, can, can, can much we get profit. Becky, can, but, <laughs> we, but if, we, if we say it here, it's got to be audible to them. Thank you. Question for... Uh, I just took another Tylenol. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only saying this from the tax collector's standpoint. I'm assuming I would be the one in my office that would be collecting the sewer bills if, if the town did take this on. I, that's an assumption. I don't know. But the whole there is a process for water and sewer that other towns collect utilities, similar to the leaning process, which we would be shutting people's water off, or, or I don't mm -hmm. know about the sewer, but th that's there's that whole scenario of sending certified mail and, and having that whole um, collection process involved. Just sure. to say. Mm -hmm. um. yeah. And I, I know that you say it's generating, at this point, $10,000. Is that above all expenses? Yes. And how much are the expenses? Expenses run around $14,000 a year. So the annual income is about $24,000 in gross income. And the, the, the difference is that um, the system generates a significant amount of depreciation. So it's a non-cash, depreciation is a non-cash expense. So the, the, um, the difference of, of the two reduces that back. So we have our gross income, we have our direct expenses, our cash expenses, if you will, which leads to a cash surplus, but on an operating basis, it still shows a loss. There's no taxable, we're a nonprofit, no tax. I'm, I'm not so worried about okay. having to pay Uncle Sam taxes on the, our septic. My concern is in 10 years, 15 years, what's the cost of the replacement of that system going to be? And therefore, is that $10,000 annual monies enough to cover that in the future? There's two you ways. See, you see that? That's, I absolutely you see where I'm headed? There's two ways to view that. The first is that we are currently covering that 80, 90 percent of that depreciation through this cash, this cash reserve that we are. However, the system that is in place right now is expected to have an indefinite life. The Presby system that was installed is not a system that has a, how, how would, the own, how would the, they express this? It can, be, it can be rehabilitated, I guess is the way they say it. Unlike the Elgin system, where once it's clogged, it's clogged and you can never clear it. The Presby system is designed so that it can be flushed, cleaned, and brought back on. So its true life is pretty much the life of the plastic. Number two, and I think this is more important, municipalities generally, and there may be exceptions out there, I don't know of them, do not aggregate reserves to replace their septic systems. I guess it would be similar to, are we aggregating reserves to replace our bridges? Are we setting aside $50,000 a year to replace all of our bridges when they need replacing at some point in the future? I don't believe we do. No, we have, we have in the past had capital reserves, but we've done away with capital reserves, gone for the point of we can bullet whatever we need when we need it. Yeah. We are in an enviable situation in that given the current rate structure and given the fact that the users are paying what they're paying, we actually are accumulating sufficient funds to replace the system in the future if need be. But we've been told by our engineers and legal advisors that that is highly unusual, that very few communities are aggregating that amount of cash. Um, uh, two years ago, the TVA came and said they wanted a, a selectman to, on their board of uh, directors, and, and um, I'm, I'm that, so 
He drew the short straw. Yeah. Well, also, you know, <laughs> what is that called when the, when the reporter says, uh, here's the truth, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Um, we have to uh, we have to talk to the to the legal system, you know, our, our lawyers and the legal system in general. I, I would think the state law <clears throat> that would either be encouraged uh, the town buying the, the system or discourage it, and and we would have to have somebody dig into that. Um, second, a, um, a selectman who was participated or was uh, knowledgeable about the old system um, said at one point that absent your uh, successful um, um, work with a granting C, whatever that is. Um, the alphabet. Yeah, yes. it would probably be, it, the, the responsibility would fall to the town and it would be a substantial unbudgeted <coughs> a, a account because of the failure of the system. I don't know if that, if that was an accurate thing, but... That's exactly what the five commissioners in right. Concord said. Right. Uh, and based on the health and safety, et cetera, but not on town policy. Um, and just as an aside, uh, if you would... Um, TVA has people that I believe are knowledgeable about the water systems um, upgrade. Not recent, but there was one, and that was on a grant, and I have reason to believe, but I've never read it, and I, I don't know, that part of that grant was that they were going to involve meters, and if, if you could ask TVA to whatever information you think is, is uh, uh, necessary, it would be helpful. I was told the same thing, I, but it was anecdotal. You're right. And I was told and the I've same never seen thing. paper, but there are people that know probably that know where the water systems grant came from and, and, and could find paper trails someplace in this right to know. I, I don't know, Steve. The, um, I, do, I do know that the grant environment is drying up pretty quickly. It's not what it was two, three, four, five years ago. And, and my, the only reason I ask is that it, it might not be too late to... Um, um, see to it that the water company lives up to the to the you know, even at this late date lives up to the requirements of the grant that they somehow let go by and which would I believe would be a uh, protection to the to the system the new system that was in at least in terms of possibly I don't see how we would be quote an interested party in that well any any Rate payer. Right, an individual. And we are. But the village association is not. Correct, except they have more information, so anything, any, you know, any information that they could give us in terms of. You give us a lot more credit than I think we. <laughs> could you can at some time, not names, but just give us a financial look at, because you said you have a number of people that are in arrears for. Because if you ha you're generating a profit because everybody's carrying it, but if you actually had to go after the people in arrears, would you still be generating a profit? If we went after the foot, if, if, we, if, we if we were to collect what is in arrears, we'd be generating even more. Okay. So, but you you have you have no system when they set it up. They didn't set it up with any guidelines for collecting. Is what you're saying? Is what I got. There, there is a um, a deed restriction mm -hmm. for every property that's connected. Because the owners of the properties are not individually responsible. It's when they buy the property, it comes with the property. When the property is transferred, it transfers with the property. So the, the ability to, put, uh, to attach that property is absolutely there. To perfect a, <coughs> an attachment on it is, is certainly possible. Um, I'm not willing to do it. No, no, I understand that, but that is in place. It's absolutely okay. Yes. Yeah. Further comments to the? Oh, we're going to let Norman go and take another time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you still have a lot on your agenda. We appreciate the information. We understand it's an ongoing, and we're going to have to discuss this and get information from the. Absolutely. Again, I, I, 
this was not a sit down one time yep. and hey, let's make a decision. Yep. Uh, again, I wanted to wait until we had our full expanded board here to make this presentation and then to make myself available for whatever additional discussion you'd like. As Becky asked for financials, sure, we can absolutely circulate those. I mean, they're all, they actually, because we're whatever the nonprofit status is, that information all public notice, publicly available anyway. And it's all prepared by um, uh, David Caputo and the firm, and Caputo, Gamwell, Kelch, I think, on there. So they, they've been doing all of the uh, financial reporting for the Village Association from what I think is the very beginning. So we have that. Oh, good. Right. Well, I have it since I've been there. Earlier years are not all oh, complete. Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry, I misunderstood what you no. said. They've been there. We probably get it from them. But the village, the village records are um, incomplete. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> the friends. Uh, we've got a couple of things. We can update you on the plumbing, um, air games thing. A couple of days. Um, he's got everything done. The water's back in the building. Lakes Region came, turned it on. There was a shut off that Eric could do within the building, so when he plumbed up the rest of it, the water is on. Uh, the heat, um, we're meeting with Jesse Lyman next Tuesday um, for them to finally service the furnaces, hit the switch, and the heat will be back on. Just to make sure it's working. That it's working. Now, but. Yeah, now that we don't need it. Um, electrical Gus is it's kind of a continuing thing. As the plumber came, he installed a new hot water heater. Gus will have to wire that. It's kind of some other lights that Gus has got to finish up with. Um, the alarm company came um, and finished their work, so it's back online. Barbara See and I uh, responded to an alarm call last night. Um, not knowing what to do uh, without our names on the list. Mm -hmm. and uh, Actually, Parker called me. So, Parker so got to call. One of the things the alarm company asked us to do was to send her an email um, saying who should be on the list to call if there ever is an alarm. Who so was last night's alarm? It Electric was, a, you know, rubble. It wasn't anything wrong with the building. It was something wrong with the monitor. Um, it was CO2. Well, it was the CO2, but it was more the wiring than wiring in the box. Yeah. So. And there was no CO. No, no, no. It was just. just not, there's nothing on. Right. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's nothing going on. Um. So if you have any ideas for names, who's going to respond? If you want a selectman to. <laughs> and what we were told was um, either to call Rich Colkid or to call Lakes uh, Lakeside Security. So we called Lakeside Security, so uh, just to see what I was supposed to do. And they said that we can't do anything. That uh, the fire chief was was supposed to go in, and she would be over because she didn't understand what was happening, except what we read her. It said trouble with CO upstairs, so um, she says it's got to be in the box because there's no CO in there at the moment. Could we do right. So the, the only alarm you have is a fire alarm and a CO, two, CO yeah. alarm? Yes. 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 Then the call should go to Carroll County Dispatch, and Dispatch should be calling the fire department to go check it out. Okay. That's Perfect. how all alarms work. Okay. All right. Well, because Parker got the call and he yeah. didn't even no, know that. No, it should go to the Carroll oh, County Dispatch, then the dispatch will, will tone out fire and rescue, 
for them to go check yeah, out what, the fire. Well, I'm wondering if the dispatch they'll call Ponca because Ponca's name was originally. Well, it don't make much sense that they're calling. Well, they've never had if it was a fire alarm, why would they be calling you? They should be calling the fire department. Right. right. So I'd say that from the town, you need to let the let the. The alarm if you get a hold of Richard, Richard can make an arrangement so that he can contact the sheriff's department so that they know that whoever the alarm company is is going to be calling the dispatch and that they will be toned out. Get for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The alarm company just needs to know. Yeah, the alarm company. Yeah, the alarm yeah. company needs to know that. So what about 8185 or 8158 of PD general saying no? No, the alarm company should call yeah. directly yeah. to the dispatch. Yeah. We did, never had a CO monitor in there yeah. before. That's right. new. Right. Yeah. They just installed it. And that's you know, what's going on. I'm not quite sure why yeah. we have a CO monitor because people aren't supposed to be sleeping there. But anyway, public yeah, but. Is the furnace? Well, is the furnace on the paint? Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, the new law has changed. Well, yeah, because Rich that. had it right in his town report that all residents now, but new ones, especially since 2017, needed to have CO2s in public places where people meet. Well, it has changed to now public places as well, even for me. I so believe. Okay. But my question yeah. was is the alarm rang in the box, not on the alarm. So if somebody was upstairs, yeah, who, knows? who who would hear the alarm because it was ringing in the box? That's why no, no, I was glad it was, it was ringing upstairs. It was ringing upstairs. Okay, yeah. Yeah. but it, on the box itself, it tells you but it was, different things. Right, and we didn't understand what it was, so we trans. You know, she double called us. The alarm did, company all we needs had to do was leave a message at that point. Right. And then they can yes, determine that, where it's. I can, I can yeah, call the alarm. Know. I'll call the alarm company tomorrow. Yeah, that's a no yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. yeah. Um. One of the other questions we had was if there could be a decision made for who's going to work on the kitchen. Um, and this week on Monday, we discovered, we went in, Barbara and I wanted <coughs> to let somebody in or out, I don't know which. Makes sense to do it. Was it Monday? And the basement stairs were soaking wet. Um, just the stairs, no boards around it. It was kind of like somebody dropped in a set of wet water. stairs. <laughs> you could see water. They were squishy. Oh, that's um, a bad sign. Yeah. Well, well, we, yeah, yeah. well we, we, we've got a sign up that says, do not use the stairs. Um, what we determined it to be was, ice melt was stored on the stairs. On the and top. With on the sand. top with the two buckets of sand, and after they had cleaned it up, uh, Service Master, they had left two buckets of the sand and the ice melt. Barbara and I noticed one day there was water in the ice melt bag. We dragged it outside, put it in a big garbage bag. And Aaron took it for us. <laughs> and Aaron took it for us. But that water, the salt water, had leaked all down the stairs. No, over, the, over the months. The stairs were covered with a rug. Yeah. So that it salt was just penetrated down through and for was, years. Mm -hmm. And then when he took the rugs off, now of course, now you see that they're just soaking wet because there's the salt still in the wood. Right. So basically, they need to go. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> but sooner than later. Yeah. Because, and, and the other day, as what well, was Eric Ames, the plumber that was there, he said they were getting slippery yep. and really squishy mm -hmm. when you walked up. So. Mm -hmm. so. We did put a ribbon across down at the bottom and a sign at the door at the top that they were under construction and not to use them. Yeah. Let's go all the way around if you go in. You know, so that decision should be made. Basement. And we only got one person that gave an estimate for that, and that was Mark Thatcher. Nobody else wanted to do it. So. Um, Put the back to the kitchen. We need, right. we need to get, because they're calling, just setting up their work already, and we don't want to lose yeah. one of the two that you have to decide on. Good. You know, I've, I've read the stuff, but you have two mm -hmm. local, highly respected right. mm -hmm. um, folks, but both of them, it seems, ex except for the stairs, have bid on they have an estimate for the kitchen mm -hmm. and for the windows and and so the door downstairs, downstairs yeah. which are pretty substantial. Have, are, are you going to recommend Steve? that that it split up and have one of those suppliers do 
maybe the downstairs and then one in the kitchen or you that's or, up to you guys yeah. we, 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 we got the uh, numbers and then uh, you guys can Steve they're not both comparable bids that's, yeah. no they're not one no. is re one is taking the windows out and just putting up board and the right. other is leaving the windows in and cementing everything so I guess the question comes is do we want to keep the townhouse as is with windows in it, or do we want to revamp before we can even choose a bid? Is do you want to keep the integrity of the townhouse as it is, or do you want to but change the integrity the, of the townhouse? Additionally, there's a third. Isn't didn't Gary put in put in? That was for the water outside. But, yeah. the but he didn't do anything about brand. No, that, yeah. those were the side windows. Oh, okay. That are coming but not in. The, they not want to the the Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean. I think we have three things that need to get accomplished. Mm -hmm. The kitchen, the stairs, and the door. Okay, yeah. I mean, I really yeah, feel that those windows are fine there. I, yeah. I like the idea of having some light come into the That's basement. It, yeah. Yeah. You take them out, it's going to be mm -hmm. black now. <clears throat> yeah. So I would recommend we have someone do the door, okay. not the windows. The stairs need to be replaced. Mm -hmm. That's obvious. And the kitchen. <clears throat> I don't want to see that expand. We can't expand into the bathroom area because right. that was designed with ADA compliance. Yeah. And yeah. We don't want to monkey with that because that would just be a whole nightmare. That would interfere with our voting to if, if we weren't yes. in that compliance. Right. And even bumping out uh, that corner, you're going to involve getting into the ceiling and a whole bunch of other problems up there. I agree with having the opening increased. Mm -hmm so that you have the whole kitchen facing in. And I think that simplifies it, and I would hope would reduce the cost. I'm sure it will. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, because before it was to move the whole wall back and do all kinds of stuff. It was... And I don't think it would be... More than we need. ...handicap, you know, the hallway. accessible the hallway. with that little bit more of a hallway to come around the corner, I don't think. Right. Yeah. And the other thing is, is that door jam in that hallway. Needs to be. Cut if out. that could be removed and just a trim board put on there, it would widen it out yeah. to give you yeah. right. Right. enough room for somebody with a wheelchair to get yeah. through there without picking their fingers off. Yeah. 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 So they'll definitely each one of them have put in for oh, the ceiling and uh, doing the hallway and stuff. So each one of them, you, you right. There's have some to repair ask there. them to take off that much off of it, so that's that not going to help you any, but <laughs> they will be lower than what they are. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's what I would like to see us do. Well, um, would you re-give, would you ask them to redo it with the, this, the so your apples to apples with the RFP or whatever those are called, that they're doing the same thing, or how, how would you, well, I don't know if they bid on exactly what well, the three mean, things you're talking we did, about. Those were oh, estimates. They weren't concrete. We tried to tell them yeah. the um, same, same way so that they could pull it out. You know, and we did only get one on the stairs. Right. Got got some, by, you know, got that's, yeah. Yeah, that you've decided. I mean, that's... You know, that's and make a motion to decide on that one. And maybe even the stairs the and, the, and the downstairs doorway in the post. Maybe that could be one, and then the other one, the kitchen, if that's what you want to do. It's up to you guys. You have to make the decision. Well, though. also, it's the yeah. schedule. Because the schedule is getting full. Right. So we need to. Right. Because right. they're going to be all busy during the summer. Right. right. And one of them said it would take two or three weeks just to order the down the cabinets, you know? So we need yeah. we need to. But there's some groundwork them. before those cabinets go in. Right. Be done, so. yeah. Yeah. Um, and obviously, there's some. Wires that probably need to be moved. Uh, yeah, you know, the lights were yeah. 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 up. section up, there's yeah. some wire there. So yeah. while well, Gus is still there doing yeah. stuff, it would be a great time yeah. to have that happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said, I think both of them said without electricity on their estimates, too. So. Well, the, the uh, events that you're planning or, or that you expect will use this, would they be? Hindered by avoiding the bump outs in the kitchen, with, with, with the, if we did, did what Willie just suggested, would there be adequate space? Yes, yes, yes. In that yes. kitchen. Yes. And is there yeah. a reason why you think that his idea is not so good? I mean, well, it, it was both contractors were kind of looking and 
coming up with things and different ideas and expanding it. And then it was, as time went on, we discovered with tape measures it wasn't going to be feasible and, you know, there would be some other issues that would mm -hmm. arise. arise from it. So, yeah. Yeah. so um, and also this, the ceiling in the kitchen is low. Comp and it, it's the same type of ceiling in part of the bathroom. And it's kind of like everything that's gone on at the townhouse, you open something up and you find a disaster. Yeah. So it was like, no, I, nobody really wanted yeah. to open that ceiling up to see what's up there. And even that wall side, we don't know what's in that wall. We were thinking it, so just leave the wall. But if we open the front, it we still can put the refrigerator the way what's we there. want it. And um, does, it'll does be it, open. Does the board, does, does the board want to request that the friends go to the folks who supplied the estimates and give them the new, the new, the, yeah. the, the, what? But I think that we could get Mark to start doing the stairs right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's just that he, uh, you know, he might want to, well, there might be another piece that he'd be, that he would want to. Well, his, Mark's is separate. My right. is separate. All of his is separate. separate. But also, yes. with Mark's estimate for the kitchen, he stated if the selectman, you know, went with him, it would be three weeks for him to order the cabinet. So he could... Be doing the stairs. <clears throat> right. Get everything ready for the cabinets right. to go in. Right. And, and do the stairs. And the stairs. one other comment I want to make is, we met with Arnold Grayton from Holderness, and he also supplied an estimate for the outside perimeter drains. But when we were walking around the basement with Arnold and his son, he looked at the windows and he said, those windows were fine. All you really need to do is put up some blankets or good good winter curtains <laughs> to keep the cold air out. Yeah. So, you know, he, he gave the building a look over. Yeah. But the door definitely needs to be fixed. Yeah, and it's both. Mm -hmm. right there. So. So, uh, are we okay with? Well, I'll make a motion that we go with Mark Fedrin's bid for the stairs of eight thousand. No, it's like six thousand. No, no, no. What is it? Sixteen? I actually can't remember. Sorry. Sixteen hundred even. Sixteen hundred even to start the stairs as soon as possible. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Darling, does he have his certificate of insurance here? I'll have to walk. Okay. And then I think my recommendation is that you go back to the contractors and give them the new yeah. ideas yep. and have okay. them bid on it again. Okay. Okay. I make that as a motion. Second. <laughs> and is it, um, are, are we okay? Is your suggestion do we let the windows be downstairs? Yeah. And, but and yeah, window I would curtains? say for now because we haven't even decided what to do with the basement. So right. I, I would think, you know, I, I think right. probably. Yeah. So, so when you when we asked both estimators, not not just the door, yeah. but could they give us an estimate that does not include yep. work yep. on yep. that? Yep. And other changes. Well, Willie said just the door. Are you talking door and kitchen or just the door? Do you well, want them I mean, to incorporate? I'm thinking door and kitchen. Well, yeah. No, we need yeah. to get it. We need yeah. to get it all done. Oh yeah, the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. So, so you know, simplify the kitchen. Yep. And we can just call the door. Tomorrow. The door Tomorrow and the post beside the, it. The, right. the, the width of that. Well, it'd be nice in the going from the main All entrance right. door to the bathroom. If we could take the trim off that, mm -hmm. would also be well. Okay. But they've got some sheetrock work that has to be done in that hallway. Right, where the mold was. Where the mold yeah. was. That's got to be repaired. So, I mean, that's part of that All package. Yeah. But, but also, the, you know, anything that will make that ADA <coughs> Uh, more ADA. Right. Yes. It's going to be compliant. Yep. Yep. We can get to a call. point because we have some good news. What's the good news? The uh, state, uh, Andrew Cushing, has uh, said that our application, well, if we so desire, for the historic has uh, met the first hurdles and he's 99.9% that we get a letter 
in a month or so asking us if we want to list it on the registry. So it seems that you know the folks who were there, I mean, not, not just the friends, but other people yeah. who mm -hmm. were very interested. So I mm -hmm. thought that was pretty good. It idea. opens the doors up for the Moose Plate Grant and the Hell Chief Grant. Right, yeah. and also, also being a historical building, some of the ADA code compliant things may not be quite as stringent. Yeah, but that the, the entryway into that into well, that laboratory. But yeah. we've Let's, already gone through it. Steve. We had the whole hubbub a number of years ago. Yeah. We went through the whole ADA thing. We had somebody come up from Concord and looked at it. We had to redo the whole ramp in and into the bathroom. And they said, you're good. I'm just saying if we can make it a little bit bigger, we'd be better. I, I, I believe we should do that. If we can. Uh, we, yeah. we have folks in town who could use yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they don't like banging in the Well, box. even the Andrew Cushing said when we met with him, with the Alchip grant, Eventually, if the town wanted to put in an elevator, it would be outside of the building. That's something that could be applied for, you know, if the town... Down the line. Right. Yeah. Everybody hangs around Herald Square and, and looks, at, looks at that out, outdoor elevator going right. up and down. That's the neatest thing in the whole world. Let's put one of them up and all this down. <laughs> I don't know if he's got enough wood for it. So we'll get yes. those. We'll get those well, guys back. Can in. we vote on the motion? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was thinking. So is there other get... discussion? Oh, I'm... I think we're voting for them to go get new estimates. Right. Yeah. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. 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 The other estimates you had were for the water inside the remediation, and the two estimates outside for the drains. One was. <laughs> and then there was the other one. Gary Jones. Yeah. So one's at some point in time, you have to look at those and decide on that, too. Now that the snow is gone, at the emergency exit from the upstairs... Would be on the right side. Right, of the on, the, on the ground the outside, you can see right into the basin. There's no dirt up it, against it at all. And there's, it's, you can see it, you can see the septic pipe coming out. We, we need to address that, but I, what I've seen is we didn't have a big flood of water coming in from rains or anything, mm -hmm. but there does need to be some foundation drainage work to right. make it slope away from the building. Right. I don't think we need to spend $53,000 no. in the water. Like that and, and there's very different, um, the, 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 very, very different uh, proposals about how to handle it, I, right. I would think, reading those things. Well, two of them had the outside track and digging down and whatnot, but then one of them went further and was going to go under the driveway and, and over in to get over onto the other side of the road, possibly, the, and I think that's where the, the expenses come from. Right, and, and there was a... Um, the, there was a problem with grade there also. And, the grade and has to be off. done, yeah. Can we put it under old business so it'll come back yep. to keep reminding sure. us that we need to look at it? Well, one of the things What's they that? said, the best time to do the drainage yes, is, the the fall. Drain. is yeah. in the fall. Right. Right. So if we put it there, at least it'll keep jogging our memory I mean, and we know we got to do it by fall. Remind us we have X number of dollars to work with, mm -hmm. and these pieces are important. Sure. We get yeah. those done. Yeah. And yeah. Work our way along. Mm -hmm. um, this is got a loan pile out here. We can take some of that out and turn it up for building. The other thing we where there's no record of who gets charged, we didn't get any records from Parker saying how much the barnstormers paid. We have amounts, but we don't know how often, if the barnstormers used it seven days, were they charged fifty dollars each day? Was it a set amount? We have invoices for that. We bill for that. But we, it's it's and I think beyond it's, the barnstormers is kind of like who pays and who, who charge. Right. Who you know we we've heard things that if there's a funeral at the church they don't pay at the townhouse. If there's a wedding at the church they don't pay at the townhouse. Um but we have no record to go by, so... The, we were told that the policy is... Is there a policy? It, yeah, well, I don't know if it's written, but the way this was <laughs> done for the past seven years is 
Nonprofits don't get billed. For profits pay the fee. Nonprofits from town here. Now, not nonprofits in town. Okay. Don't get don't don't pay. Barnstormers, I believe, is a nonprofit, and they pay. Right. Yeah. For a, a, you know, and sometimes they were using the front lawn, and sometimes they were using the building, mm -hmm. and it was um, I. I thought that they would not be charged because it was non town non profit. <coughs> non profits outside of town and uh, other organizations outside of town, I thought always paid, and that was what we were. I thought that was the protocol, and I think it was held to pretty consistently. Did Kathy, didn't she, didn't she do a revenue for you for the? She did. She did a small one. So you wanted to go back further? Well, it was only like three months that I, uh, when I looked at it, oh, um, just for last for year. Bonds. Oh, why don't we go back for a couple of years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and well. I, I didn't know is, how they were charged. Like, oh, I mean, that's what we want is just the guidelines so that when somebody calls, you know what to tell them. You don't have to come back every time and ask you guys. You know, we just have something in writing. Right. You need a policy that you can go, here's the policy. The worst like you said, you pay or you don't. I think the only what if is some of the organizations not from town, if they were in fact charitable, there were private private organizations raising funds for charitable, you know, 100% of the take was going to go to X charity. I think that was difficult as to whether or not they charged charities. I'd be willing to work on a policy because, number one, if anybody's holding an event there that's not a nonprofit or something, like a person is renting it for the evening or something, we should be requiring event insurance because every other venue around, so if they if they put their incense in there and the building burns down, it doesn't come all back on us. They've got event insurance. And That's cheap money. Yeah, it's, I mean, you can get a policy for nothing, and most places require that. Even our venues that hold weddings around here require you to purchase a separate event insurance. So I'd be willing to work on a policy, bring it back to the board for approval, disapproval. And again, the same thing. I have a tendency to disagree because the taxpayers have to pay for the building. So if it's somebody out of town, no matter what they're doing, there should be a fee that they're charged. Sure. Well, you know, that's lost the business. Mm -hmm. So I will, I'll be more than willing to work on that um, type of policy, usage policy, and what they have to supply, and like event insurance, and name, contact person, if for some reason something comes up, they can't use it. Char fee, scale, fee scale or straight fee, I'll write it both ways so you guys can you know, it. Reynolds, Reynolds Hall and Union Hall is, is a fee, but that's primarily custodial to pay for cleanup and materials and et cetera. And that's anybody. Right. I, I understand here that we use, we allow the nonprofits to use it at no charge and stuff. And would they need the event insurance? Yeah. No, because you cover it. But if somebody from the outside is going to hold a birthday party there, then you want them to have event insurance. Although, if residents want to get married there, I never know. Nowadays, you know, they, they do require event well, insurance. Yeah. And yeah. again, well, I, I understand, I understand it's the no alcohol and stuff like that, but then, you know, yeah. they'll be put it in, great. you can mark it out. It right seems to me there is some policy that was developed Something. On, and we ought to look, you ought to have that when you start drafting it. So I'll see if I haven't seen anything. I, I, I keep on looking. Well, do you have a form that they fill out? Yeah. We, 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 we may have Oh, you came up with it, but did we have one prior? I don't. Okay. I don't know. Yes. I mean, same thing. Trash in, trash out. Who's responsible for the trash and the whole line yard. So I'll work on it. I'll take a look and see what we have. I haven't come across it yet, but I certainly can keep on looking. Are we moving on? No, nope, yeah, we got one so. more thing. <laughs> <laughs> one more no, 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 no. It's like Columbo. <laughs> um, <laughs> Darlene had sent us an email saying, you know, to come in to set up an account for the unanticipated revenue. Was that in all their box? That yeah. They read that? Yes. Um, it was my mistake, I'll take blame, that on the poster I did put the Friends of the Townhouse we want to be clear that the Friends of the Townhouse is um, not going to apply for grants. We can't. 
we're a volunteer, we're not an appointed committee. Um, it was, we were planning on doing it under the auspices of the Tamworth Village Handcrafters, our little craft group that we It'd rented. all summer and fall. Oh, mm -hmm. and the money, what we did when we purchased the tables yeah. last summer, we asked Parker, in lieu of paying rent, here's a receipt, we purchased these two tables that were needed, and we would like to continue that with the rummage sale and that money going towards the refrigerator and other things that we would ask the board to accept as gifts and donations. Now, the, the, origin, the original thing is that that was the way it was, that, that's been planned from the get-go. Right. Well, that's what we yeah, thought. Yeah, but we wrote down it was the Friends of the... It, it was a Friends of the Town House. That's, that's, a, that's a municipal, that's a, you know, that's still town money. So it would need to be taken in differently than just this donation from an outside organization. Right. Yeah. That's all. Oh. We just wanted to make sure the the records were going to be. Yeah. And I properly. didn't even. You know, when she typed it up, I didn't even catch it. Right. So. so, so we were well, going around that's switching. <laughs> that's good. So we don't need so, to come in and set up. No. So yeah. so we, you'll just have to. They'll have to accept it at a public meeting. Yep. 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 That's all. Yep. Yep. When we get to that, that's it, Dan. Okay, go ahead. We'll take your money or your refrigerator, whatever you want. Yes, to that's right. <laughs> no, we paid it. Now can we move on? Yep, that's okay. it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. No, you, but it's good, you know, and there's a lot going on. So. Um, do you want a little public comment on it? Uh, well, I, I, I think we better do administrative. Um, no, that's, that's fine. Okay. Oh, Steve, well, that's I'm not going anywhere. Kim. Yeah. Okay. Because I thought I was under department head, and then all of a sudden I got. Um, it has come. I didn't know she was coming. It, it, no, you did not. And it was. I was just going to speak at a department head. Um, he. Uh, it has come to me that in the town of Exeter, they're they're um, relocating. I guess they're what I'm going to assume is their uh, vital records and things. They have a shelving unit that's available for the taking. Um, and I, well, I put dibs on it, and there were a few ahead of me, and they're not, and now I'm up. So, but I have to, we have, it has to be moved by May 8th, which I believe I have that covered, if we so choose. Um, the dimensions of it, and I'm just gonna throw a few pictures of it at for you. Um, that, uh, so here, sorry. Um, he needs. Willie really needs a map. It seemed to fit. Oh, there's a. Oh, there's a this bigger one. Big, this is like the ones down at the registry of deeds. Yes, mm -hmm. similar. So, yes, I mean, it's pretty it is substantial. Yeah. Um, we ran downstairs prior to the meeting and we're doing a few measurements to say that it would fit in this area. I'm thinking of in the cellar. If if at this point that is the best use of it, if um, going along later with the municipal records committee and finding if we need shelving and if it works up in this fall, swapping, whatever, or someplace within our town buildings. Um, safe place, obviously, secure and environmentally <coughs> climate controlled. Um, but I didn't know if to take this opportunity for the free shelving, because I know the shelving is very expensive, can be. Mm, yeah. um, and the Moose Plate grant that I've been applying for for the preservation of the records and the, and the books themselves, um, <coughs> is limited to what they'll cover, and, and one of the things they say they don't cover is shelving. So um, that money's maybe I could retrieve from the Tamworth Foundation, monies that were are, are being held for us. Um, but I just thought if this was an opportunity to take a free... Do these move? No, or they, they don't move, cubbies? they're on they rollers. Like they have, yeah. <laughs> so as I'm preserving these books, um, there's a couple that have come in smaller size and a few bigger size, like the Registry of Deeds sizes, that would fit in there. It's, it's uh, yeah, you pull the book out and it's like rollers inside. So the shelves themselves don't pull out. It's that when you retrieve the books, they roll out, if you will. They, it's, uh, so it is not specific to paper, you know, put paper on or anything like that. It's more specific to these vital records books. Um, and, and some of them, even if they're preserved in boxes. That's, that was my only thing, was we weren't sure. I asked if it, she measured oh, it as one a, as one Six unit. feet high, six, six, six foot eight inches wide. Right. Six, six by six, eight. okay. And, and it was deep? about 14 half uh, inches deep, okay. the depth of it. 
So it was, whether it could come, she measured it as one full unit, whether it could come apart, I don't know until we get there. Um, and we'll Steve at, and I were trying to figure out, it, looking at that look angle at down cellar, if it would go around there. You doubt it? I don't think it would come apart. No, no. no neither do I, but I, I believe it, you know, we can put a little bit of jury around there and six men on the board. I was going to say a couple big guys, yeah. Yeah, we, I have. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll so, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know it yet, but they're not coming they're, together. They're with me. <laughs> I'm really pleased, personally. Well, no, right. for sitting here, I'm pleased that you stuck with this thing and got this. As you say, these these systems are exceedingly expensive. Yeah. And I had passed it around. I had asked the library. I had contacted the uh, oh my gosh, history center. Just to say that if it didn't work for us, if they were interested in it, um, and they found because it's specific more to the books yep. um, and not you know shelving shelving, that they didn't see they didn't feel they had a use for it at this time, but they thought it would work. Registry of deeds, though. Yeah, I'm all for this. Yeah, I'm yeah. all for this. I make a motion. Move ahead. Okay, okay. Right. Is there? Thank you. Uh, I'm. Thank you. I, I just Thank have to let them know by tomorrow morning, and I have to pick it up by May eighth. So that's why I, that's why <laughs> I'm you. sorry for the short notice. I know the order of discussion. I think it's a great idea to the point where I I volunteered somebody else who should remain unnamed, but his initials are Dan, <laughs> and his pickup truck to go get the thing. But I don't, know, say, I don't know if that's fair. Can save that butt on out too. I don't know if that's fair in a pickup truck. Uh, I, yeah. I was going to put it in my Tonka truck, but I thought the one time. What it, the one time? I can send a flatbed for it. Oh. All right, well, I'll talk to you, too. We'll, we'll Thank do you. that. Thank well, you. All those in favor. Yeah. All those in favor. Oh, all right. Opposed. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the short straps on it like that in a pickup that. truck. You turn at 30. It's going over. <laughs> in that narrow. Yeah. Thank you very much for Thank your patience, you. ladies and no, gentlemen. No. It's, it's um, pu public comment time. I'm going to you down. I won't even ask. <laughs> I just have Linda Medeiros, 379 uh, Whittier. I was here about six weeks ago, March 22nd. There had been three votes by the board relative to the track, and I'm just trying to get a handle on what is happening with that because I haven't seen anything that I know that's, that's changed since then. So my understanding was there had been a decision to purchase a handheld meter uh, noise decibel meter and a decision to request from the track their operating plan and a decision to request from the track their data on what they are keeping for noise um, data. So again, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm not an anti-track person. I would state again as I did back in October, I purchased my home knowing that track was coming and so I'm not here to, to be difficult. Um, I have seen a 2005 operating plan for the track. Um, I don't know if that is the operating plan for the track, if that is the one the board is using. Um, but I will say that in addition to some concerns about, you know, when are we going to monitor the noise if someone has a particular complaint, as I did when they had a motorcycle event, um, second to that, um, the operating plan that I saw certainly spoke to a lot of... Um, economic benefit to the town and and perks to the town and promises that were made to the town that the track would be um, offering and so that I'm, I'm just not even sure where that's at I mean it seems to me that the board should be very much aware like when you ask you know back in March what about this operating plan and everybody on the board says oh we don't know is there an operating plan it's like well how can you not know? I mean, that's a plan that actually promises to do all kinds of really great things for this town. So if we want the track to be here, and we want the track, you, we, there are residents here that are upset with some of the noise, but I mean, finding out how they're going to help us and how they're bringing an economic benefit to us and, and making, um, making them actually come forth with those benefits. I mean, I, I'm just sort of at a loss as to why, where, where we're at with this and, and why there's so much delay because I feel like this started in October. We were back in six weeks ago, March, and here we are now. And I certainly am not aware of anything really that's that's transpired since March, um, personally. So, um, Some of the things we made some progress on, some uh, we haven't. I believe that at least two of 
the members here um, are going to either have or will download the um, app that a, a number of knowledgeable people said is it's the, the one on, on your iPhone or whatever phone they use is, is remarkably good. Additionally, although I don't have the brand name, um, we've had information that the um, CMI monitors sound with, um, you know, big high-tech stuff, but they also use handheld uh, decibel meters um, during the course of an event, and the folks who, employees who use those, use those to, um, uh, I, you know, I want to get this right, to tell a particular <clears throat> participant, hey, wait a minute, you're done for the day, or you have to, you know, it can't. And so the idea would be to try and get information about what they use, and maybe th that's what we would buy. Um, I think what we're trying to do now is make sure we understand the nature and the scope of, of any problem exists about the noise thing, and, and frankly, we'd rely on the, the uh, offices of CMI to provide some of that information and also to do some, uh, granted, uh, as Norman says, untrained, uh, 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 uneducated stuff, but people who can read a decibel meter, and we have some folks who have done some of that in town, and, and, and they could help out. Additionally, um, hmm, additionally, I believe, I don't know, you know, it depends on, on who, on what meetings or non-meetings you, you decide on a progress, but I think I'm okay with this, that a couple of representatives of, uh, from, from sitting board members will meet with um, a couple of representatives from the administration and, and uh, the governance of the track to get together about what plans are to um, damp down noise and, and what plans exist to, um, and also to identify the specific areas where the problem is just noises. Your other, the only thing I've heard with um, some of the um, concerns about the operating system that I haven't read, frankly, in probably 10 years, because when I was on a plane where we had to read all that stuff. That there were, I think there's a change in some of the firematics plans, but I, I haven't really asked, uh, I haven't, um, I haven't asked that, uh, the, the chief to, uh, about that in depth, but we will, you know, we'll, one step at a time, and, but we'll read it and we'll, uh, Go find out what's up. Okay. Well, so I'm confused because you sort of skipped over one. So if I have, just go back to October when, or it was actually September, if I have um, in, in, in a real-time moment um, a problem with the level of noise, what I'm hearing is there's still no remedy for that. I will not have the ability to actually say, hey, can you test it right now? Because right now they're, they're really way over the limit. In, at least in my opinion. So that seems to not be in any way resolved by anything you've said. So that's number one. Number two, um, the operating plan that I read, I mean, first of all, it had, it is, it's a lengthy document. It has a lot of different things on it, but certainly with regard to noise, um, they are required, according to their operating plan, which is generated by track rules and regulations, which I have not yet obtained or even tried to obtain, but they are, they are in their operating plan saying we will follow these regulations for all tracks that if a town requests us to turn over our data that we are required to keep, we will do so. But what I'm hearing is that hasn't happened yet either, although it was voted to happen March 22nd unanimously that you would get it. So it's six weeks later and either it hasn't been requested or it hasn't been produced. And they've got an operating plan that says they follow guidelines for all tracks that require them to do it. So I find that to be a concern as well, because it seems to me, based on what I read on the operating plan, that they will have data from the motorcycle event and from all other days. And you will at least be able to comparatively see, wow, was it really different that day um, or not? So I'm still, again, 
you know, I'm not trying to be hostile to them, but I, I do think that there needs to be some way in which you're actually going to do your job, because this is your job. And then the third piece is that the, the operating plan, just to say, well, you know, we'll get around to reading it, it's like, well, you know, it's actually quite a detailed thing. It, it has a lot in it. And I, I don't have my phone with me. I had itemized sort of all of the various points of the operating plan and the things that they promised the town they would be doing. And nobody is, is actually looking at that. Nobody's actually looking at, you know, are they supplying us this benefit? Are they doing this? Did they get this bond? Did they, you know, they have an operating plan um, in terms of even um, breaking down where they're at in terms of their development. Um, and the town, from what I would understand based on my meetings here, you don't even know what stage of completion they're at. I think we all understand they just opened, they're not, they're not complete yet, but there's still more things that they should be doing. And um, there's bonds that even are there to protect the safety of the town. And there's all kinds of stuff in there. I, I'm just not understanding how no, nobody here has a clue what you're supposed to be doing and with regard to even the operating town that they had to put together that operating plan in order to get their permit to, to even build the track. Permit so uh, their, their permit for the wetland. It was a condition the of Corps. the wetland permit. So the, that the they operating plan is for the Army Corps? Mm -hmm. So they don't report those, they report to the Army Corps of Engineers? Uh, no, actually, the operating plan and the, and the permits say that this goes to the town. And the operating plan itself says what it does relative to reporting to you, working with you, promising you benefits. Interesting. Uh, it goes on. It's, it's a multi-page document. So, um, and, and it's good for the town. It's... it's a benefit to the town, it's a benefit to the residents, it's, it's something that I, I can't, I, I still understand how the board is not actually taking an active role with this track management and saying, where is this, where is this, where is this, where is this, where is this? Like you can just create a checklist we, from the plan. We've, create, we've, we've re requested certain information and it's, as, as of now it's, it has not been forthcoming. And, I'm not sure whether, whether um, I don't know if... if so. I can send you the one from 2005. I mean, well, the one that. from 2005. I have that. I, mean, I do have you know, that. <laughs> how much could it change? I mean, that was what they represented they were willing to do for the privilege of being able to build this in our community. And nobody's asking them to do what they promised to do. And secondly, you know, the noise thing. It's like, wow, this thing just went up, it started it's operating, it's, it's running a business, and, and everybody here has just got their head in the sand, like, whatever. We, we, the, we re, we've, we've discussed and would go to, to our little um, unprofessional, but effective, I believe, on the phones or the on a, or a handheld. And effective if there's a mechanism for when someone has a complaint, there's a way to actually have it responded to. If I have a problem and it takes two or three days for someone to get out there to go, it's meaningless we, data. I, I believe, I'm certain that I live close enough. I'm certain that there are many days that they are they are totally compliant. I, 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 I my, believe there's general concern. agreement where we would go to what we believe um, and they, I would think that they believe also is the most egregious uh, concern about uh, um, noise and, and discuss with them uh, um, steps they're taking and give us an idea of the nature and extent of and we, we're coming to your uh, neighborhood too, you know. Yeah, again, you're missing the point. It's, a, it's, it's, you know, all of the data should be available from the track already. They have the data. It might be that they're testing it differently. They're not testing it right at the 69 mark. But they should have data from every single day of operation all day long available to be analyzed and reviewed. We, we, we've to, requested to, that. To see how you know, day-to-day, -day they're operating. So that, you know, 
that's not my question. My question is, when there is an issue, um, as there was the day when I came here and walked in and said, "Gee, you know, how how do you how are you monitoring this? Because today is pretty crazy loud over there." Um, and you know, Darlene says we don't have a system. Um, so being there on a random basis, checking when they are already required to check, um, may not necessarily in any way add more information. Um, so, but if if there is a complaint at a particular time on a particular day, and a person with a complaint has no ability to get anybody out there in that moment, it, it seems to me that having a handheld unit isn't <laughs> isn't really going to be any more effective than what we're doing right now. We're, we're expecting that they that we can rely on their data, which is. I'm sure professional, et cetera. Well, you, you're but expecting, we, but you don't have it yet. And it's no, been we six don't. weeks of requesting it, and you don't have it yet. So it's wonderful to say you expect that that data will be helpful to you, but when are they supposed to produce it? They should have all this data available, and according to their own operating plan, which you have from 2005, they haven't chosen to update it, then they should be held to the 2005 one, at least for now, if they haven't updated it. It says... Promptly. What is promptly? Is six weeks promptly? I, I'm, again, so I, I'm just frustrated. They're about to open, and I don't see anything has changed since October. So, um, just, are they going to be given a deadline by which they need to produce this data that they are supposed to be collecting every single day, all day long, while they're operating? They, this is data, they haven't been operating all winter. So there isn't really any reason I can think of that they can't provide their operating data from last season. I, I, I believe, and I don't want to speak for my brothers and sisters, but I, I believe that uh, one of the goals is to cooperatively, once we have a pretty clear idea of the nature the, and the extent of, the, of, of individual problems and the concerns that you've just brought up, is to, is to uh, try and work cooperatively with the, with the, you know, it's a local business. I'm all in favor of that. Right. I don't think six weeks <coughs> of, assuming you requested it, which I, I'm just going to assume for the moment, you <laughs> assuming you requested it six weeks ago, I, I'm not sure where the cooperation is coming. So that's, that's just my concern. Um, and secondly, again, it's not just the noise thing. There's a whole lot of stuff in that operating plan, and I, I don't see... <coughs> where the board is actively implementing the, the operating plan that they say they are responsible to you. They, there's, that's their language. Not, I didn't invent it. And so it's, it's not reporting back to the permitting agency. It is to the town. And the town is doing nothing that I've seen. Darlene, would you please make a copy of that operating plan and put it in my boxes? Gigantic, well, I think everybody ought to read it. Well, it's, it's multiple pages. It's not it's gigantic. Or, it's about or, ten pages, maybe eight oh, pages, ten pages. I have a binder. Okay, so you well, know the maybe that's different than what maybe, I'm thinking. Yeah, maybe what was yeah. what they published in 2005. I, I can't speak. It maybe eight to ten pages. I, I yeah. didn't look at it before tonight. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll I have a binder of it in there, so I'm going to leave it out for you. Well, yeah, leave it out. We ought to look at it. Well, well, and what I've they read published. The one that you're referring to. Yeah. Well, the yeah. one they published is is also, I mean, that's right. available. So it's a published document. So yep. is it on their website? Uh, it no longer is. Um, so yes. I certainly have a copy that I can send to you. What sure. what they sent out in 2005. That'd be great. Um, Thank you. So yeah, pass that around. Yeah. yeah. Well, Thank I you. Would hope that it would be passed around. Yes. yes. Yeah. And the town administrator has reminded us in preparation for this meeting. I think the last. To uh, to get going on this meeting with, between representatives of board and Mayors, and we're all afraid of her, so we'll, we'll you know we'll, we'll do it. Do what I can. Yes. Well, yeah. Sue. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Um, just two points for clarification and one suggestion. And uh, one point for clarification is that it's not just the operating plan, it's the noise ordinance that states that they need to provide this 
information promptly. Um, the second is that often at these meetings I hear that offers to come out to people's homes and measure the sound levels, but as far as I'm aware, there's nothing. I know there's nothing in the noise ordinance that calls for that, and I don't know of anything else any other way. So while well, I think it would be great just to have confirmation that certain people are not going crazy, that they really are hearing what they think they're hearing, I don't think we really have any basis for doing that. Um, but the suggestion I have, because I'm really, really concerned about the amount of anger that's come up over the last 15 or so years in the town and the amount of division that's happened. Um, I have some ideas about things we might do, but um, not for tonight. But one really simple thing that we could do is to get the draft copies of the select board minutes up online as soon as they're legally supposed to be available. And I understand you don't have to put them online, but as long as they're produced on time anyway, if you put the draft copies up, then we know what's been discussed. So government oversight, I understand, I don't know if they're recording now or not, but I understand, I know. Yes, they I, are. Okay, I do watch them sometimes, but it takes uh, two and a half hours to go through it, where the minutes give you the information that you need right away. And I do have a copy of the Attorney General Joe Foster's memorandum, a little excerpt from it, um, that does state, memorandum on the right to know law, that does state that you can use a draft copy um, to present to the public um, before you've had a chance to present, uh, approve and present approved um, minutes. So that's my friendly suggestion. I think the reason why we haven't been is that draft minutes are, in fact, in this state, the minutes. So in order to follow along, you have to read the draft, and then you have to read the next draft to find out what was corrected in the original draft. And, and uh, I believe the assortment and the town administrator felt that you know, it would be more beneficial for folks to... But they are available. I, I, I don't agree with that. I, I think that... What she said, they should go up. Five days, they should go up. They should be there. People can look at it and see what happened. And then the next meeting, they can look at that and see what happened and see a correlation, see if there was a mistake, a correction, additions. I, I just think it's good to have full. And then would, then would you also put up the, um, would you, would you read, uh, post? The minutes as amended? No. You never change those minutes. Those are the minutes. No, no. But and when you make the correction in the next minutes, is correcting that set of minutes, but you don't change them. I, I understand that's a requirement under the RSA, or under the, the decisions, um, either by the court or by the AG. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, not, it's not particularly wieldy for um, <coughs> any of us to do that, but can we... What do you mean? We need to do that. Well, I don't. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't understand. Yeah. Sometimes I don't either. Um, <laughs> uh, may I just ask because 